All right, Madam Clerk, you got it uh, started recording? Yep, I think we're recording, we're working. All right, so I think we're probably good to go then. All right, so we will begin uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. I'll please rise. I pledge of allegiance to the, to the flag of the United, United States, States, States of America, of America and, to the and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, 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 with liberty, with liberty and, justice and justice for all. For all. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, we will call this meeting to order at 7.07 .07 p.m. Um, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Von Cricks? Here. Benedetti? Here. Campbell Watton? Present. Lefevre? Here. Pate? Here. Perushi? Virtually here. Rizepa? Here. Quorum present, Mayor Rizepa. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. So uh, thank you everyone for being here. Um, although it makes me sad to have to do it virtually again, it is what it is. and. Uh, Particularly, uh, I know as um, Clerk Devita did explain to everyone that uh, we had a lot of interest in the study session. So I uh, wanted to be able to do this without, you know, having 30 to 40 people go come into council chambers or anything like that and don't want to obviously deter anyone from participating um, because they'd have to attend in person. So uh, as much as I'd love to be back full time on the uh, in-person meetings and I think that they are obviously more productive too um, that uh, you know we've still got to do first and foremost make sure everyone uh, we're not doing anything to jeopardize anyone's health here so certainly appreciate your understanding um, and working through this because uh, it's less than ideal for everyone but so so life goes some days um, and that's just part of it so we'll just get right into the agenda here um, this one should be fairly brief frankly um, before we do a uh, study session, closed session, we'll talk more about that later here. Um, so first thing we've got on the agenda is the minute approval from the July 6, 2020 regular meeting. So move. Approved. We've got a motion on the floor. Support. Uh, moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Benedetti? Yes. Campbell Watton? Yes. Lefevre? Yes. Pate? Yes. Perugia? Yes. Rizepa? Yes. Von Crix? Yes. <laughs> Let's try this. Let's try this again. Timber, can you hear us? Somehow it looks like we lost audio on Timber. And she do a raise hand. Looks like she's not there anymore. Yeah, she no. must have lost connection. Oh, here she is. Let me unmute her. Okay, Timber, can you hear us now? This is unfortunate. I love these Zoom meetings. I love them. I know. I know. Not my favorite thing, that's for sure. I think Timber's driving her car is a problem. Yes, again, I just cut you off for a minute. Okay, so Timber, we had a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting yeah, of July 6, right. 2020. Crazy, maybe. Okay, yes. Yep, Thank yes. you. Okay, motion carries, Mayor Rosepa. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. I appreciate that. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, we have for presentations and proclamations, and this is another one uh, that I wish we could be in person for. Um, but a resolution uh, recognizing John Dahlquist, um, the assessor here. So moved. Um, the resolution, oh, yeah. I, yeah, we, I appreciate that. Um, I'm going I'm to read through it and then uh, we'll, we'll do the vote here. But uh, so talk about well-deserved. And uh, I had uh, 
the city assessor from the city of Grand Rapids contacted me um, asking if we were willing to do something like this. And I said, yes, absolutely. Because unbeknownst to me even, um, John has actually been serving as uh, the president of the Michigan Association of Assessors on top of obviously all of his duties here and other community involvement and things. Um, so yeah, he's uh, done a lot, not only just for our community, but for our state. Um, the resolution reads, uh, City of Trenton Resolution 2020-11, uh, whereas John Belquist was born and raised in Trenton and graduated from Trenton High School in 1975 and went on to pursue his bachelor's in business administration from Michigan State, which we won't hold against him, uh, in 1979. And whereas John followed his father into manufacturing and ran the family wood pattern business in Detroit until 2004 and further advanced his measuring and data collection skills as a material soil technician for Soil and Materials Engineers, Inc. The city of Trenton is fortunate to elect John to the Office of Assessor beginning in 2005 with four subsequent re-elections to that position where he has devoted hours to educating residents and promoting justice and equity in tax di distribution. And whereas, while raising two wonderful daughters with his wife, Leslie, and being blessed with a much loved grandson, he has also served as the president of the Michigan Assessors Association, president of the Southeast chapter of the Michigan Assessors Association, president of the Wayne County Assessors Association, along with devoting time and energy as a member of the Trenton Rotary Club, Trenton Downtown Development Authority, and volunteer youth basketball coach for St. Joseph Parish in Trenton. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the City Council of the City of Trenton, with admiration and gratitude, do hereby honor the tireless work and dedication of John Dahlquist and his service as the president of the Michigan Assessors Association, along with recognizing his many accomplishments throughout his career in property tax administration. Um, so I do believe we have a motion and support on the floor here. Um, is there any further discussion? Yeah. Yeah, I have something to say. Yeah, go ahead. Is it okay? Yeah, yes. I just want to say that uh, I think this award is uh, very well deserved. I've known, I've known John Dolphus my entire life and I uh, went to high school with him and I've worked with him at City Hall and I just have to say he's one of the most honorable I'm glad that somebody's recognizing that, and uh, I'm proud to say he's from the city of Trenton, and uh, proud to have him with us still. So that's all. I just wanted to make that remark. Certainly, Mayor. Yeah, Councilman Lefevre. Yeah, I agree with Timber. John's a first-class guy. He does all the right things, knows the right people, and just a uh, common-sense guy. He's also in the top ten of people eating Coney Islands in the city of Trenton. Tom, John oh. loves Coney Islands. Does a great job with those, and I've had an occasion to eat a few with him. John, you're a super guy. Keep beating those conies. Funny. Woman paid. I see you've got your hand up as well. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I just wanted to um, also say congratulations to John, and we are uh, blessed to have him in our community, and he's been nothing but uh, gracious and a gentleman um, and supportive the whole time. So congrats, John. You deserve it, and I wish I could shake his hand. There we go. Shake his hand. A virtual fist bump these days now. So, yeah, no, I <laughs> couldn't agree with that uh, anymore. Um, it, when they came to us with this idea, it, uh, I think it's right a testament in and of itself that it's like, I had no idea John was even serving in this role. So, uh, but just obviously has done it uh, in a way that has made so many other people proud um, and is well-deserved for his commitment uh, for all of us. So thank you a ton, John. We appreciate it. Um, so I think actually, Madam Clerk, uh, we'll probably have to have a role on that too. Kevin Watton? Yes. Lefevre? Yes. Pete? Yes. Perugi? Yes. Rosepa? Yes. Von Crooks? Yes. Benedetti? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rosepa. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. We appreciate that. So next on the agenda, um, we've got the uh, public comment regarding items on the agenda. Uh, so again, this is strictly related to items on today's agenda. Uh, if there's anyone from the public wishing to speak, again, strictly to items on today's agenda, uh, please uh, begin with your name and address. Uh, limit your comments to five minutes and direct all questions through me, the chair here. Um, so if there's anyone that has any comment on today's agenda items, 
please uh, use uh, the participant feature to uh, raise your hand there proverbially. I'll give it just a second, but I'm not seeing anyone. All right. I, I don't see anyone, Madam Clerk. Is there anyone on your end? No, I do not see any hands raised as well. All right. Great. We'll move right along then. Thank you. Uh, so next on the agenda, we have uh, appointments here. Um, and uh, right, we've got a, uh, a appointment here for Larry Coleman to the War Memorial Committee for a term expiring July 1st, 2023, and a motion would be appreciated. So moved. Support. Support. Right, it has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Lefevre? Yes. Pate? Yes. Perugy? Yes. Rizepa? Abstain. Von Crooks? Yes. Benedetti? Yes. Campbell Watton? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rizepa. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next on the agenda, we've got uh, the 33rd District Court uh, fines, costs, and fees from July 2020, along with the return of surplus funds. And for that, we will turn it over to uh, our uh, 33rd District Delegate, uh, Councilman Lefevre. Okay, thank you, Mayor. We have the return of surplus funds. Uh, the court sent a check to the City of Trenton for $32,421.86. Uh, it's been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Um, no, can I make a comment, Bill? I'm sorry, but I did receive the 33rd District Court's fine cost fees for June 2020. Um, I believe it was after your packet went out, so you may okay. not have that in front of you. So can we do the 33rd District Court's fine cost fees June of 2020 and receive in place on file the fines cost fees for June 2020 submitted by the 33rd District Court showing the city of Trenton owing $15,690.75. Thank you, Wendy. That was not me. <laughs> <laughs> that was not me, Bill. Can we get a motion? Oh. I'll support it. You can't support. Can you support it? Who's got support. a motion for? Okay, motion for Bill. Support from Timber. I think there that makes sense. So, uh, okay. for the discussion on that. Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Eight. Yes. Perugy. Yes. Rizepa. Yes. Von Crooks. Yes. Benedetti. Yes. Cabawatton? Yes. And Lefevre? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rizepa. Thank you very much. And uh, I guess just for a point of clarification here, um, did that take care of both of them? That was just for the first one, fines cost okay, fees. Okay, gotcha. So next up then, we've got the uh, return of surplus funds. Um, we'll also defer to you there, Councilman Lefevre. Yeah, I made, I made that motion already. Okay, so we've got the motion on the floor. Four, yeah. All right, moved and supported. There we go, that's right here. Uh, is there any further discussion on this? I'm sorry, who who gave support? Was that Cabawatton? No, it was me, Rick. Oh, was Rick. Yeah. Daddy. sorry. No, no problem. All right. All right. Moved and supported. Any further discussion on the motion for 33rd District Court return of surplus funds? Seeing none, Madam Roll. Perugy? Yes. Rizepa? Yes. Von Cricks? Yes. Benedetti? Yes. Cabo Watton? Yes. Lefevre? Yes. Pate? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rizepa. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Appreciate that. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, groups and organizations, Trenton Outboard Racing Club, Roar on the River. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you want to take that one. 
Okay, we received an application from the Trenton Outboard Racing Club requesting permission to hold the Roar on the River boat races at Rotary Park September 26th and 27th. Um, I did pass this by the departments to ask um, if for approval from our departments and I did get some feedback from our departments regarding the condition of Rotary Park. Um, it is the department's recommended motion that we deny this request from the Trenton Outboard Racing Club due to um, water conditions at Rotary Park and the condition of the boardwalk amongst other like the executive order from the governor with not knowing what the allow gatherings will be come in September. But I believe that Mr. John um, Roche is in attendance tonight. I don't know if he wants to speak regarding this or, um, you know, we how you want to move forward with this, but John Broche, I believe, is in attendance if you want if you want to allow him to speak. So I'll move. To, uh, to speak or what, Bill? Yeah, I want, to, I want to hear John's explanation for it. Okay, you don't need a motion to have him speak, right? Well, I don't know if that's, uh, if, that's, yeah, if that's the will of the body, that's fine with me, certainly. Yeah, is your motion to deny, Bill? To deny? No, my motion is to hear John Broche. Oh, okay. Support. Yeah, moved and supported. And uh, I mean, I, I don't. We can go on that, but I certainly would. We can just let him speak. I don't know that we need a formal motion, but since it's been made, um, that we'll we'll take the that motion, Madam Clerk, roll on that just to have John uh, give some insight. And I guess just to add, uh, our, our situation here is that we got this request from them. Um, I'd, I'd talked to the group at different points, um, and then over the last few days or so, um, departments have expressed varying levels of concern um, between building and engineering, between parks and rec, uh, police and fire, just as about the overall event. So, uh, John, John, if he's still on, uh, please feel free. I can't, I say I can't see it on my screen, unfortunately, right now, but uh, John, if you're here, yeah, feel free to uh, elaborate on the event or um, you know, if there's any questions council has too, we can bounce that around. Um, I do have John unmuted. I'm not sure if he's having problems trying to speak. Maybe Paul Jacks, if he's on as well. Maybe Paul, would you like to speak on this? like Paul is muted right now, Debbie. Oh, let's see. Hello, this is Paul. Hey, Paul. Hi, Paul, go right ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, the Wayne County uh, back, uh, I think it was April or May, uh, decided <clears throat> that they were not going to be able to host the Roar in the River, and <clears throat> they denied or didn't uh, allow us to even to submit uh, application. Um, and I think since then they've closed all their activities in the park. So <clears throat> in order to keep the 70-year uh, uh, tradition going, uh, we've turned to the city of Trenton and uh, made some inquiries and found that the process was submitting this application. Uh, and John Broche is the uh, president to now the Trenton Outboard Racing Club. And so John pulled the information together. <clears throat> we basically just provided the uh, general information. Uh, we understand the uh, concerns with uh, certainly the park and or uh, certainly the conditions at the park as well as the governor's orders 
Um, there are other races that have been canceled. Uh, primarily, the majority of them have been canceled due to the COVID-19 situation, but there is a race uh, that's going to take place up in uh, northern Michigan called the Top of Michigan, and they've developed a <clears throat> plan uh, to uh, work uh, the race and to limit the uh, attendees to 500 under the governor's orders and <clears throat> to require the social distancing and the mask wearing and uh, all that to comply with the uh, governor's executive orders. So uh, there we do have the uh, uh, general outline of that plan. We It just came out last week and the uh, Outboard Racing Club is open to any uh, ideas or uh, restrictions or requirements or any uh, thing that has to be done uh, in order to have this event this year, even to the event, even to the extent of having a strictly on the water event where uh, the boat ramp would only be used to put boats in and out and the judging and all the uh, extra uh, effort that goes along with doing the boat race would be done from uh, <clears throat> boats out on the water. Oh. Can we speak to this mayor? I'm sorry, what was that? I think that, uh, yeah, the, the concern that we had was from, and I think this is probably a good opportunity, was from Parks and Rec from uh, DPS, uh, just particularly, I mean, so the public health standpoint is a, is a factor, um, a very big one at that, but I think that more for condition of the park, which you know, obviously is not my expertise, but uh, Joanne and Kevin, if either of you, I'd hate to put you on the spot, but I know that uh, I'd got some communication from you. Um, late last week, if either of you are able to elaborate just on, on kind of the situation that we're looking at, you'd certainly know better than I would. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think all of you know, if you've been down at Rotary Park, um, it's really, um, there's, a, there's a quite a bit of flooding because of the, the level of the river, the, um, the water level, um, and um, so much so um, that we we have also and the, and then of course the condition of the boat of the uh, the uh, boardwalk um, it is actually cordoned off to public um, so right now the only thing that is really usable down there is the um, well the, the the boat ramp is still open and operable but uh, there is a great deal of, of uh, flooding um, down by the river. And if the water level, if we get a east winds, I mean, that water level does come up or, or heavy rain. Um, so I think that that was really our main concern is um, for, from a staging standpoint of utilizing the park. Um, and, um, and then the also the, the other concern too was the executive order because currently the executive order is only 100 people can gather outdoors. Um, uh, so, uh, so not knowing when, you know, if, if that will be, uh, that that restriction will be lifted anytime soon. So those are really the, the reasons that um, our department, you know, is uh, put in our, our uh, those were our comments. And then Kevin from the DPS, I don't know if he's on the call or not, but he had similar concerns. Yeah, Ke Kevin, are you on? Yeah, same, same, same thing Joanne said. Our biggest concern is that water down there. Um, you know, if you, if you, it's bad just at a resting level now. If we were to have a west wind that day or something, I mean, it comes up in the catch basins in the parking lot, and it's just not a good scenario. Yeah. So, uh, for I mean, just from my perspective here too. Um, I mean, it's hard to argue from that. And I, a lot of the same issues we talked about with uh, even with five months ago. Now we're talking about the fireworks, um, about the issues that we might be having with the park here. Um, so, I mean, you know, ideally it'd be a situation where, you know, we could table this and just kind of wait and see what kind of weather situation we're looking at, what kind of, what we're dealing with, with the virus. Um, but that's also, I, I feel like unfair to, uh, the group trying to organize this, um, it isn't exactly make it feasible to be able to plan an event around. Um, so I know that, you know, from, from our department heads, um, you know, the recommendations have been, uh, tonight based on that, but, uh, 
certainly looking for um, the directive from council and I put it on the agenda uh, for, for the reason to just not deny it out but so that we could be able to talk about it a little bit and explore opportunities because yeah I, I would really hate to redo uh, you know ruin the tradition of this I think it's a really good event um, a lot of, something a lot of people look forward to and then if we're able to do so safely yeah it sounds great um, but I just you know I'm not sure what the feasibility of it is at this point, unfortunately. Um, so I you know, defer to people for comment here too. Mayor. Um, yes, Deborah. Um, well, I tend to agree to deny it this year only for all the reasons that you guys said. I, I know that uh, John and Paul Jocks have been just great pioneers with this uh, you know, events and everything, and I, and I, you know, love it. I'm, I'm sorry that we can't have it, but with all those conditions, and also who's going to police it and fire it and the you know, departments and the DPW for setup and different things that may have to occur, you know, um, who's going to pay for all that? And that's, you know, that was what we've had trouble with in the past with our boat races, is who's going to play for the extra overtime and stuff for our police and fire departments. So, I mean, there's just many reasons I think this year why maybe we should look at maybe doing a you know event down there next year, if you know all conditions aside here. But I you know I, I give Paul Jacks all the credit in the world because this is his baby and his heart and soul's been in it, and it's he's the reason that this uh, event has taken place all these years and stuck with it when nobody else wanted to take on the challenge. So I. Um, I commend Paul Jacks for sure and thank John Broach for his group, but I think maybe this year is probably not the year to do it. That's just my opinion. Mayor. Right. Thank you, Councilman. And then we'll go Councilman Lefevre and then Councilman yeah. Campbell after that. Here's the whole deal. I've been involved in the board race probably 35 years, okay? It's a big tradition in Trenton. I think the idea behind John and Paul is not to break the tradition. I think it's going, it's going on 70 years, Paul, is that fair to say? Yeah, it's the, it's the 70th annual. Yep. So if you're, and they're trying to run this race, whatever they can do to, to make it happen so we can continue the tradition. The Trenton Outdoor Boat Racing Club has been very, very, very involved in the city. It's a great, people in town will love this event. And if we have to put on this year and just barely put it on, it's better to have it put on than to uh, break the streak of 70 years. So uh, I'd like to see if we can do it somehow you can rope it off, people can't get down real close or whatever and be able to allow the racers to race, keep our tradition going. That's the advance that I would support, if that's possible. Yeah, thank you, Councilman. Um, Councilman Cabawatton and then Benedetti. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, Bill, I, I agree with you to an extent. I mean, I don't want to see the organization not have this opportunity this year. Um, but I do have concerns with obviously the location um, based on the recommendations of DPW and Parks and Rec, as well as, let's face it, we know if somebody's going to show up or if somebody knows about this event, we're going to have, I would not be surprised just knowing the popularity of this event, you're going to have a surge of people. So how can we guarantee and what types of protocols will be put into place to ensure that this event remains in compliance and then it just doesn't a bunch of people show up and now you're not in compliance with the the latest executive order um i think that's probably my biggest concern and i have a, a gut feeling is um it would come on the heels of you know police and fire and, and our um, members of the uh, trenton uh, police department reserves and there are some costs that are they're going to be um that are going to be incurred by by bringing those folks on board, and, and again, you know, what how, how are those costs overcome through the organization? Um, I support them, but I, I think we need some a little bit more concrete plans so that we're a in in, um, in compliance with the executive orders and be um, that you know residents that or, or folks that want to come see this event then don't just go to another location or try to you know, pack a pocket park or something along the way on the river just to see this and it becomes a bigger issue or going over to what I call Helen Park there um, up on the north end there. So uh, I think 
I, I think there may be a possibility, Mr. Mayor, but I think also that I think there there might have to be maybe some more um, thought put into the applicants um, with all due respect. Thank you very much, Councilman. Thank you. Um, um, so we'll go Councilman Benedetti and then Councilwoman Pate. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have to agree with Scott on a lot of that. It, it is, uh, you know, in Bill that it's a great tradition. I can remember going with my dad when I was like six or seven, and I love taking my grandson to it too. But the problem is down there with all that water, and I, I would hope that everybody at least goes to a ride once in a while through town and looks at it. You're gonna end up putting a fence up because that water is like halfway into some of those people's in a condo's driveway. We can't, I mean, you're gonna put a fence up around the whole area and have somebody counting the people that come in. I just don't see it being financially feasible for the boat race group to even make that much money to pay for everything. But then also, like we're saying, I mean, we're, we talk, you know, we sat here and discussed the pool, we discussed a thousand things this year that we may be not able to pay for. I really don't wanna incur more overtime God knows those guys would love it, trust me. But I mean, we're already paying for two rallies, protests, whatever you want to call it, and other things. So I can tell you that, you know, if we're going to allow these things, we got to figure out a way for somebody to fund them. That's one of them. But the biggest thing is, is that what are we going to do for the safety of everybody? It is not a good place to be taking kids down there by that water. It just, to me, it's too high. Um, you know, the bathrooms don't work. We got them closed. And Joanne and Kevin both said that wind changes and we are going to be waist deep in water in some spots because it's happening now to us at the hospital when it changes. So um, I, I just can't see us doing it right now. And Paul, I, I, like I said, dude, I've been watching them. I come down and watch them and bring my grandson and I've been coming for years. But I just, unfortunately, it's, this is a weird time. It's a weird, weird time to be trying it. So, thank you. All right, thank you very much, Councilman. And then uh, Councilwoman Pate. Um, yeah, I agree with what everybody said. I commend them for trying um, and, and trying to come up with a creative solution. But um, I also think it's a testament to um, climate change and the fact that we are seeing rising waters on our waterfront. And we don't have uh, any place but Rotary Park to offer this event. Uh, to our citizens, any waterfront access. So unfortunately, um, you know, I remember going to the boat races when they were at Rotary Park and it, I felt it was unsafe then to be on the dock personally, but uh, let alone, you know, with that, well, I was just out on the boat the other day and used that boat ramp and uh, the water is high. The people do have to drive through several inches of water that actually has fish in it uh, to get to their condos, um, you know, things are roped off. It's, it's just not a conducive place to have anything right now. And hopefully um, what we look forward to as we plan is that we find a way to make that a place that is usable for our residents. And it's a shame that uh, we can't use our waterfront. So I'm sorry, I, I just can't support this right now. I also agree that you know, if we even have it on a blocked off level, people are going to be going to all the pocket parks, like Scott mentioned. Um, they're going to be trying to get over the bridge to Grozeal, perhaps, to try to, you know, get the waterfront from their boats. How do you block that? So um, I, I apologize that that Rotary Park is not uh, in any condition for us to be using for an event. That's, that's too bad. All right. Well, thank you all. Uh, obviously the input on that too, but uh, I guess uh, just as an overarching uh, response here, do we have a motion then from council that anyone would like to make in that direction? Make a motion to deny the request. Okay, was that support from Councilman Benedetti? I'm sorry. Yes, Stephen, it was. So it has been uh, moved and supported by Councilwoman Payton, Councilman Benedetti, uh, to deny the request. Is there any further discussion from council on the matter? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilman. Uh, just, just for the record, uh, and I just want the applicants to know, um, I will be uh, uh, supporting this motion tonight. But um, just because of the conditions that the current situation is, um, I would encourage them, if if uh, if possible, come back with some alternatives. Uh, we'd be happy. I think I'm going to speak on on the city. 
but um, we'd be happy to hear those alternatives and, and try to work with you. I'm, at least I'm very much in favor of trying to work with the organization, but this is just not the right, um, this is not the right setup I feel at this time. Yeah, and, and, and to that point too, I, I would agree, Councilman, that uh, it's, I mean, it's a bummer for me. Um, <clears throat> I had talked to Paul about this. I had uh, unfortunately I talked to John, and I, I, you know, after the conversations there, I thought there was going to be a way that we'd be able to make this work. Um, and then over the last couple of days, uh, it's the information I've gotten from our, depart from our department heads um, has made me realize, I guess, that it's a lot more challenging right now than uh, what I thought we were initially getting into. So it is a bummer. Um, you know, uh, it's never fun to say no, frankly, um, especially for an event that's gone on for so long. Um, has so many dedicated people and does so much good for our community. Um, it's something that people look forward to. Um, but I, I just maybe without hope, I don't know, fingers crossed that something drastically changes over the next few weeks here and it's something that we can still explore going forward. Uh, any other uh, comment uh, before we call the roll? Mayor. Yeah, Councilman Lefevre. So we're saying it's not safe for the rotary boat races, but it is safe to have a family down there for the boat launch. Is that what we're saying? saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I think it cut out on my end there. I didn't. Okay. Well, I, I guess what I was saying is that administration said it's not safe to have people down there, okay? All right. But are we still going to have the boat launch open? Or is it safe for the boat launch? I think that's uh, kind of a different story. I'd rather have, if I, I would say, if there was a situation where maybe two, three people were using the launch within a very short time frame uh, might have some concern too and if everyone was watching it and gathered around the entire time no i mean the high water issue yeah as of right now um and i mean joanne or kevin um feel free to correct me if i'm overstepping but to my understanding at very least and i will say that i'm you know be the first one to say i'm no expert on this that the high water an issue um but it is not something that is inhibiting people from launching their individual boats um, not want, you know, a couple hundred people gathered there um, and having a, a larger event at that from that time. I'm talking about the safety issue of the high water being down there and the kids going down there to the boat launch. Yeah, to my, to my knowledge, I, I don't know of any safety issues for an individual boat launch now. Would, would Kevin and Joanne agree with that? Uh, Joanne or Kevin, yeah, I'd certainly appreciate it if, if I've misstated any of that. I would agree with that, Mayor. Um, that is correct. And with the new um, ramp that was put in, um, it, it is um, there, it is safe for boaters to launch their boat. But what I think the condition of having additional people gathering, uh, it's a two totally different um, scenarios, I think is, is um, the reasoning. But it is, um, it is safe it, to launch your boat um, at that location. And water is not an issue for that. The high water. With the new ramp that was put in, that that uh, dock was extended. Um, the, when we put when we um, put in the new ramp a couple a month or two ago, um, so that has alleviated um, any safety issues. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilwoman Payton. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I used that boat launch last Wednesday, and um, there is one portage on there. Um, we were able to, we, we when we pulled the boat in, my dad has a large truck, so he had to kind of maneuver it in the parking lot. It wasn't easy for him because of some of the water issues, um, but we were able to launch the boat dock. Uh, float. It's not very wide. It's not a place you're going to gather on. Um, but it's enough to launch your boat and be safe doing that. Uh, but I would not have gone anywhere else in that area myself. Thank you. Right. So any further discussion? Yeah, this is Paul. Uh, may I make uh, a couple of comments, Mr. Mayor? Absolutely. Yeah, some of these ideas about the, uh, the cost and the event itself, we <clears throat> discussed uh, in our uh, uh, bi-weekly meeting with the Outboard Racing Club. And as far as the event goes, it's not uh, looking to be anywhere near the size as what it's been in the past uh, 15 years 
at Elizabeth Park, let alone before that at Rotary Park. Uh, the plan is to uh, do possibly even just two half days of racing uh, where it would be a very limited turnout, uh, small, uh, like three classes of uh, boats, and that <clears throat> the uh, uh, spectators uh, would not be uh, <clears throat> allowed in that boat area and that it would be restricted to the families. Uh, my understanding of the governor's order is outdoor sporting events uh, that uh, <clears throat> are outside can host up to 500 uh, people as long as they uh, comply with the uh, executive order requirements of distancing and mask wearing and all that. Um, <clears throat> that's the plan that's being uh, formulated for the top of Michigan race. Um, I use that boat ramp on a regular basis and I've really got to commend the city for the improvements. It's in the best shape that it's been and I've been using that ramp for 50 years. And <clears throat> right now it's a very, very usable ramp. It would work very well for the race. The flooding in the parking lot is on the northwest corner and it is very disruptive for the uh, <clears throat> residents down there, but it would be an area that could be uh, fenced off or <clears throat> excluded from anybody going in uh, for the event. And uh, <clears throat> the Porta Johns, that would be something that uh, the Outboard Racing Club would look at uh, providing uh, so that uh, there wasn't a problem with uh, uh, lavatories being closed. And those are just some of the thoughts that I had listening. Um, the, uh, the last one is, is to uh, either table this uh, motion and we come back with additional plans or revised plans or that it be uh, uh, approved on a tentative basis uh, and that it be up to uh, mm -hmm. the conditions at the site uh, the week of the event. And those are just some of the thoughts that I had as I was mm -hmm. listening to the comments. Thank you. No, thank you, Paul. And I guess that, that's a good question that I'd have for you is, um, I mean, part of the situation at this is where, you know, we don't want to tell you, we'll, we'll wait and see how it goes because that right obviously doesn't give you uh, enough time to plan the actual event. And that's, that's, you know, unfair to your organization. But from what you just said there, does it sound like that is something that we can kind of just hold off on and see if, okay, if the, the water conditions improve, and they might not. I mean, literally there could be a situation where nothing changes over this next month, month and a half, yeah. um, but so be it. But, but is that something that's feasible from your organization's perspective where we can say, okay, we'll hold off for another couple of weeks, a month to see if anything improves. And then if not, we can pull the plug on it then. Um, or does that give you guys enough plan, uh, time to plan the logistics um, and, you know, sort of overall I'm gonna, goes into this event? I'm going to answer that with a very conditional yes. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, the uh, understanding I have with the uh, American Powerboat Association is <clears throat> in order to get this race sanctioned and on the circuit and covered by the insurance, it needs to be, uh, the sanction uh, permit needs to be submitted 60 days in advance of the event. And I believe that 60 days is gonna be up in uh, the end of July. Uh, <clears throat> I also believe that uh, the uh, American Powerboat Association with all the other events that have been canceled or postponed till next year are very um, interested in doing whatever they can to be able to have uh, whatever events that they can have the remainder of this year because there virtually has been none. And so I think that that permit date might be uh, somewhat flexible, but uh, I would need John Broge to uh, answer uh, that or to look into that. Uh, yeah, no, thank you. That's that's certainly helpful um, to this. So right now, the motion we have on the floor here is to deny the permit. And I suppose uh, we're to council here to see if we want to, in lieu of that, um, table this till the next meeting, uh, just to see what conditions look like, or if we just want to go forward 
um, with denial here. Um, I make a motion we table it. Okay, so well, we've already got one on the floor here too from, uh, from Wendy, and it was supported uh, by Rick. Um, so would uh, would Councilwoman Pate? Would you be okay with amending your motion to table it, and uh, would you be okay with that as well, Councilman Benedetti? Uh, I have a question for the organizers. Um, would our August meeting be too late then for you to make a decision of having your event? If we, yeah. if you were to come back to us, like I, I feel like we should deny it. Down. I need a better plan that gives them two weeks to come up with a better plan and can they resubmit that to council for our August whatever meeting our first meeting in August um, I, I believe we could because the application that was submitted uh, was done without any of this guidance uh, estimate of costs or uh, the uh, the planning part uh, we're all uh, hoping that uh, the uh, executive orders would expire, but they keep on keep on coming. So uh, we know it's a very uh, difficult time to uh, make these decisions, but I think that uh, the uh, possibility of submitting a more extensive plan uh, could be accomplished, and I could probably have an answer uh, by tomorrow. Mm. We don't even have an answer by tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to stick with the motion and just request that they resubmit. That, that would be my uh, view at this point. And, and yeah, I mean, uh, I guess, Scott, this would probably be a question for you or maybe you as well, uh, Madam Clerk, but uh, mm -hmm. deny it as is right now. Would There would s still be room for them to be able to resubmit for the next meeting. That's correct, right? I just want to make sure procedurally I'm on the same page. I think we also have to send the message that we need to have a more prepared um, outline for any of these events that people might be thinking of. So uh, it might be helpful to others to um, be a little more thorough in their presentation. Sure. And so just for clarification, Scott or Debbie, you, you would see no, no issue with denying it as is right now, but then having them come forth with another proposal that would procedurally Correct. make things. Correct. The only concerns I would have is um, this would have to, I, I'm not sure what kind of costs would be also incurred. The, the departments would have to also submit if there's anything that's required from DPS or the police or fire. There's, sure. if there may be some costs involved in, in holding a special event, even though they're not planning on having <laughs> A lot of participation. You know, what if this is the only time someone's having boat races, and so it it does draw a, a huge gathering. So it, there may be some cost involved with that as well. But May our I next council you? meeting is Monday, August third. So okay. as long as they would be able to get the information to us by um, Thursday, July 30th, it could go on the August 3rd agenda. Okay, great. Then Councilwoman Bond corrects, did you have something? Mayor. Um, yeah, I, I just have a question of Paul. As the outboard racing committee willing to pay all the costs that are incurred by that would be incurred by our city books that uh, the city of Trenton associated with this, in these kind of events. That's why we couldn't have you know a couple of the you know the mar you know the um, market people that I wanted and stuff. We were denied you know based upon costs of you know that our departments would incur to have something like that. And so I just want to know that is if, if in fact you know you do come back or is the outboard racing club willing to incur all the costs that would be associated with the city you know making the been making the park safe to you know do something like that would they be able mm. to incur all those costs i'm very sorry i'm uh, catching about every Hello. other word timber yeah, me too. Uh, 
as um, far as like what I said about incurring all the costs with the outboard racing club, be able to incur all the costs, you know, of getting the park ready, of the police, the fire, the DPW, um, would they be able to incur all those costs that are, are incurred by a race like this? Because the city of Trenton is not allowed by law to incur any costs for these outdoor events or these events that are put on by private clubs. So, and it's not a city of Trenton event anyway. So I just wondered, are, are they able to incur all the costs? I guess I'd have to know what all the costs are. But with that uh -huh. said, the um, uh, uh, reorganization process with the Trenton Outboard Racing Club has got the uh, budget uh, for, or the uh, funds available for the Trenton Outboard Racing Club at an all-time low. If you recall last year, uh, the event right. uh, was a disaster and basically that uh, took away uh, the majority of the fund balance that was used to uh, uh, hold this event. Right, right. Yeah, that's what I, my concern is too, Paul, is that the city of Trenton does not have any funds right now that we can expend on, on something like this. You know, even if we wanted to, um, right. we're not allowed to. And that, that's one thing, you know, there's many events that we wanted to hold down there, but all of a sudden the city would have to incur these costs and we're not allowed to by law. You know, we were gonna have that big vintage market thing and, you know, Jim Wagner came back and said, you know, that this is the law, we can't incur any costs associated with these kind of events for the taxpayers because it's coming out of the taxpayers' pockets. So we're not allowed to do that. And that's just what I'm thinking. I mean, would they be able to have the money, which you obviously said no just now, to, you know, get the park ready <clears throat> and, and also, you know, for all our department costs. It's a costly event, as you well know, even with the Rotary and the Rotary not making any money doing this event too. <clears throat> so I'm just, yeah. you know, with all the health concerns and the budgetary concerns, listen, I'd love to see it go, you know, go forward, but I don't want to get your hopes up. And, the, you know, two, three weeks later, we say, well, no, we're sorry again. I mean, yeah. I, I would make, a mo you know, the motion on the tables to deny it right now. And if anything miraculous happens, maybe we can look into it at a future date. But uh, me, just one person, one vote. I, I think that this year might not be the year to do it, and we can do a 70th next year or something if conditions are better. But um, you know, you know how it goes. Listen, I I just about do anything for you, Paul, because I know your heart and souls in this. So it, it well, hurts me to even say no, you know. But I, that's I just I, have to deny. I appreciate that, Timber, and we know that uh, you've been a big supporter of the race, as many of the members of the council Absolutely. and the city have been. And uh, it's been a partnership over the years between the Outdoor oh, Racing yeah. Club and the <clears throat> Rotary Club and the city and the county. And uh, we oh, are yeah. disappointed as well. But uh, the cost associated with running the event at the level that it's going to be run, to really answer that question, I guess I'd need to understand what those costs would be. And right. if there's a way we could do it at no cost uh, to the city, if that's a possibility that uh, we could work that up within the next uh, two weeks. I don't know the answer to that right now. Yeah, and that's one concern. The other concern, Paul, is the, um, you know, the conditions of the park and the uh, um, actual boardwalk there is falling apart, which we haven't had a chance to get fixed in, you know, but we've had some weird conditions with everybody not working and, it's just yeah. been, it's been a horrible, horrible six months, you know, for everybody, I think. And uh, I guess we're all just trying to do the best we can. And we want to keep <coughs> going and I hate to be doom and gloom, but uh, I just like to see it get something, you know, for next year and make it spectacular, hopefully, and do something on that order. And uh, I, you know, I hate to say no to you uh, for sure. I really do. It kills me. But Thank you. I just think for right now, it, with the, you know, the vote on the table, uh, I, I just can't support this right now. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Scott, did you uh, see you got your hand up here? Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, if I could suggest, um, maybe if we administratively had a chance to get all the department heads together, um, try to make sure we have a clear understanding of what uh, the, the backdrop or the scope of the 
um, the event would be. Uh, I believe the 500 attendance limit is currently only in effect in Northern Lower Michigan and in the UP um, that I believe it is limited to gatherings of no more than 100 people in our uh, region right now. So if that would make a difference, um, but also trying to find a better understanding, uh, I think we need to have quite frankly some discussion with our police department uh, on their ability or willingness uh, to enforce any crowds gatherings. Um, we haven't been trying to uh, be very active uh, in the uh, enforcement of the executive orders um, and taking the police away from their regular duties. Uh, but I could see if we were to have an event that uh, there was gonna be a, a gathering in excess of 100 people or in several areas along the riverfront, uh, that could be some things logistically we need to talk through administratively. Um, so if we come back uh, a couple weeks from now, if that gives uh, the uh, event planners an opportunity to, to get their ducks in a row, uh, little, come to grips a little bit more with what reality would be, but we can also get a little bit more of an assessment of what the park would be and the logistics um, and give them an example of what the cost that I believe Timber was uh, referring to. Uh, maybe we can make a more informed decision in two weeks. Thank you, Scott, I appreciate that. So I think in summation here, um, the motion on the table right now um, is to deny that request, um, but do think that there is an appetite, and again, anyone correct me if I'm wrong, uh, to continue to explore ways that we might be able to make this work um, and get a real um, strong estimate of what these costs actually will be, what really needs to go into that, and if there is a way that we're able to formulate something to make it work. Um, that over the next two weeks administration um, along with the outboard racing group um, can take a look at this and uh, try and find a feasible path forward. And if there isn't one, um, there isn't one, um, but we just want to certainly do the best we can to make sure that uh, uh, all this is uh, explored and no, no stone is left unturned. Um, so is there any other comment from council on this? Mayor. Councilman Lefebvre. Yeah, I, I would hope we, the amount of work they've done over, over the years has been unbelievable. Most of mm -hmm. people live downriver here, and it's, it's, it's a hobby for them too, okay? But uh, it benefits the city. I'd love to see it. Any way we can do it, we got to do it, okay? Absolutely. To me, it's foolish you know, to hear people talk about how we're going to pay for it. How much, and I agree with everybody being able to protest or demonstrate, how much do those demonstrations cost the city trend? Anybody have an idea, practically? Uh, I would have to defer to uh, Karen Saul on that point um, for what the, the Just one second. I think I still have that document. Yeah. Not that I'm against protest. Okay. Don't, don't think of that. I, I'm, I'm five, that. Okay. okay, I have a, a number. It's $5,700. Oh. For both of them or for each? For both. One of them was only about 1500 and the other one was 42 Okay. And I didn't hear the council mention that money at all. Okay, and I know well, I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> it's in the police report. I mean, and that's no that's their job, though. I didn't know anything about that money, but that that's a police job. I mean, that's their job. To no, I understand. No, I understand. Town. And I, I'm not going to be that's apples and oranges here. What's well, dollars? They're, they're green mm -hmm. things called that's, dollars. That's <laughs> you know, I know, Bill. I understand that, but. That's it's kind of concern. apples and oranges. No, it's not. A, it's a concern. May I call and a vote I'm, on the question, please? We've got to call the question on the floor here. Is there a, 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 a I actually, from Robert's rule, I, I, don't, I believe that uh, we need two thirds to call the question. Um, but are, are we just all good to just vote on this as is? I, I think that we need to go forward. Um, and then we'll, we'll continue as administration to continue to look at this to see if there's a way to do it. If there is a way to do it, we're absolutely going to. Um, no, like I said, no stone will be left unturned. I don't want to leave anyone out in the dust or to feel like they're just getting shirked off because a lot of work goes into this. It's a great event for the city. Um, if there's a feasible way for us to do this, we'll find a way um, and we'll make sure that that gets recommended to council. Um, so with that, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Rosepa? Yes. Vaughn Crooks? Yes. Benedetti? Yes. 
Kebawatan? Yes. Blue fever? No. Pate? Yes. Perugie? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rosepa. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. And like I said, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to take a look at this, iron out some of these details. Um, I mean, so much of this is stuff that I never would have anticipated, and I'm sure that the same goes for a lot of the outboard racing group for our administration and things, too, of just the challenges that uh, they are plenty uh, these days. But um, we appreciate the discussion, certainly, and guidance um, from Council on this to uh, make sure that we can make an informed decision that's palatable for everyone here. So next on the agenda, we've got uh, City Assessor Sale of Property Lot 247, uh, Kirby, Sogi, Feldke and Company, uh, Assembly Park, Subdivision, uh, and a whole bunch of letters and numbers. So we'll turn it over to you, uh, Assessor Dahlquist. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I am requesting from this honorable body permission to sell of this vacant lot parcel 82-54-001-04-024-000. It is on Cleveland Avenue in North Trenton. So moved. The city of North Trenton acquired this vacant land property on December 14, 2015 the Wayne County Treasurer's Auction for second by refusal. Okay. Okay. And, and, well, I was gonna say it's my recommendation to allow the CSS a permission to sell the property located located on Cleveland Avenue upon receipt of a formal offer from the prospective purchaser. Sure does plan to build a residential home on property. Support. Can you hear me? Motion and support um, for this. Is there any further discussion from council? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Bon Crux. Bon Crux. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Benedetti? Yes. Cabawatton? Yes. Lefevre? Yes. Pate? Yes. Perugie? Yes. Rosepa? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rosepa. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any late items for tonight? Yes. I don't know who's saying yes. No, we do not. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Thank you very much. So next, we'll move on to uh, disbursements and statements and then reports. Um, and for that, I will turn it over to Mayor Pro Tem Benedetti. Thank you, Mayor. Let me get to him. I make a motion for the authorized disbursements of June 20th, 2020, any amount of $393,646.67. I also make a motion to authorize the ACA, ACH transactions dated June 20th, 2020. I'm sorry, June 2020, any amount of $1,942,879.86. Support. That's, so I think we'll just take those combined. Support. Moved and supported. Um, we've got hands up from Councilman Cabalatin and then Councilwoman Pate. Uh, yeah, Mr. Mayor, and, and if I may ask um, either Karen or Chief Creech, um, on the first um, disbursement, there was like a $10,000 or $11,000 charge for a fire truck repair. Um, is that to the new truck or was that to our, our <laughs> older, older truck, which isn't that really old? Just wondering what the detail was on that, uh, that expenditure. I'm really hoping Dean answers that, not me. Yeah. Chief? I'm here. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was for the 2014 um, E1 engine. So that's our, now our older engine. But that was a number of repairs on, that happened to be on one invoice. Um, 
There were, uh, I believe the brakes were, were done, um, which, you know, several thousand dollars. And then there was uh, corrosion control um, that was done, preventative maintenance. Um, there were probably five different repairs that were all on that same invoice. And we also had to have um, the uh, head gasket replaced uh, on the motor. Actually, both of our older rigs had to have head gaskets replaced. One was completely under warranty. Uh, the other one wasn't under warranty, but went through some stuff and uh, it was only um, $2,900 cars only. Yeah, only. Hmm. Okay. All right. No, I, I noticed that. I thought it was a pretty um, expensive expenditure. I just wanted to kind of check into it. So thank you. Yeah, thank yep. you, Councilman. So we'll go to Councilwoman Pate and then Councilman Lafever to stand up as well. Yeah, I had a question about the funding for the guidance center. So the I think it's Department 999 um, has a line item for the guidance center, and yet it says next to it civic betterment funds, which is also in that department. So I, I sent you an email, but uh, I sent it pretty late, so you probably didn't see it. Um, Jill has corrected that already for me when I found oh, it. Okay. I asked her today to move it. Oh, good. Okay, I didn't see it in the I just think yet. the department put in the wrong number on there. Got it. They Thank eight, you. Eight two instead of eight three or something. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Then Councilman Lefevre. Yeah, on the disbursement sheet on page uh, five, under the uh, central office report, uh, down there is the line that says uh, Comcast. $111.71. It says for internet service at Westfield Center. Is that a mistake? I hope. Uh, Karen, I'd have to defer to you on that. I, unfortunately, I'm trying to load the spreadsheet and my internet isn't. Uh... Yeah, I, I'm not sure that it has been um, canceled, um, but I can find out if the service has been canceled. I mean, do you think it's possible that for four months and been paying for it? Um, that is a strong possibility, Bill. Okay. Would you, for, you know, I, I hope you don't care about it, but I do care about it. And okay. You, Aaron, when you get a chance, check it out and see if it's just internet or if there's something else involved in that line item, okay? I sure, I sure will. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for pointing that out, Councilman. Appreciate it. Uh, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Benedetti? Yes. Kibble Watton? Yes. Lafever? Yes. Pate? Yes. Perushi? Councilman, you're out of view. You know what? Yes. Thank you. Rosepa? Yes. Vaughn Cricks? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rosepa. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, so we'll move on to the reports. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Benedetti. Make a motion to um, file the financial summary dated June 30th, 2020, schedule of investments and cash on hand. Dated June 30th, 2020, City Beautiful Commission minutes for March 5th. <laughs> 2020 Historical Commission Minutes, March 9th, 2020, Library Advisory Board meeting Minutes, May 13th, 2020, Planning Commission Minutes from June 10th, 2020, Fire Department Monthly Report for June 2020, Fire Department Monthly Report for June 2020. Support. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yep, Councilman. A uh, quick question for Karen on the financial summary. Um, just by a quick look at that, it looks like we wrapped up 2019-2020 fiscal year with roughly 96 or 98 percent of our uh, projected revenue, and we came in at 115 percent. Am I correct in that? Came in at 115 percent on uh, on expenditures of our expected uh, uh, expenditures. 
those are the preliminary figures. Some okay. things get accrued. Some of the revenue gets accrued that like money that we receive in July and August will go back into June. Um, that's what I think it says preliminary all over it um, or at the top. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you will get more final numbers. Um, we are, I mean, many uh, revenue lines are low for sure, but most of the expenditures are a little better in line. Okay. When do you think we would expect to have that all finally accrued and, and calculate out? You're thinking like in August is probably a, a better... Yes. So the auditors come at the first week after Labor Day. And um, the last time that any expenditures or revenue can be accrued is if we receive it before August 31st. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. We keep that open. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam, please call the roll. Cabo Watton? Yes. Lefevre? Yes. Pate? Yes. Perugi? Yes. Rizepa? Yes. Bon Crux? Yes. Benedetti? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rizepa. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, so we will move on now to uh, other council business and then get into department heads and public comment. Um, I'm actually going to be extremely brief uh, tonight, much to everyone's chagrin here. Um, I just want to give everyone an update on our uh, COVID-19 cases. Um, They're still climbing, albeit very slowly, uh, which is a positive. Uh, if you, like I've said before, if you'd have told me four months ago that we're in the position we're in, I'd certainly take it. Uh, you know, we'd like to see zero new cases every single day. Um, Fortunately, that's not happening, but right now we are at um, 179 uh, confirmed total cumulative positive cases uh, for Trenton residents uh, with still sticking strong and only nine fatalities. Um, and while that's certainly obviously unfortunate, um, nine fatalities, that, that is not increased in probably two months for us, um, which certainly makes me feel better. I do not enjoy getting those phone calls uh, in the evenings. Um, so that is actually the only update that I have to give right now. Um, I had spoke to uh, Mr. Hogan last Friday, uh, just to give everyone at home watching, uh, particularly about the drain project with Wayne County. And as of their uh, progress meeting last week, everything is still on schedule, should be wrapped up uh, early September as initially planned. So knock on wood and fingers crossed, um, but we'll see and all good so far on that front. Um, the only other thing that uh, I wanted to just make is kind of as a point of order, and I would actually entertain a motion on, um, is earlier we had talked about doing, uh, we've got obviously a study session and closed session tonight. Um, at the time when that was discussed, uh, we were planning on going to, well, holding this meeting in person to begin with, um, but doing the closed session first uh, was going to wrap up pretty quickly and then move into the study session after that. But I think that in the essence of time, and ease for everyone that's trying to log into this virtually, um, that it probably makes the most sense that we flip that order and do the study session first, um, and then have all of us join in the closed session after the fact. Um, and I think- I would so move. For for us. Moved and supported. Thank you very much, Councilwoman. I appreciate that. Um, is there any further discussion? Can I ask who seconded that? I did, Rick. Councilman Thank Benedetti. You. Great. Oh. Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Lefevre? Yes. Pate? Yes. Perugi? Yes. Rizepa? Yes. Von Crix? Yes. Benedetti? Yes. Cabawatton? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rizepa. Thank you very much. Um, and so that's all I have in terms of update uh, for this evening. Um, so we'll move on to other, the rest of council. And I believe tonight we uh, start with Councilman Cabawatton. Oh, wow. Fun, fun, fun. Um, <laughs> it always seems like I'm last. So um, first of all, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to thank, uh, you know, uh, those members of the DPS uh, I know they were running around town doing some cleanup after some of the high winds the other day. I noticed them. Um, I'd also like to uh, thank the, the members of the tree trimming crew. They came by the other day, uh, gave the city tree out in front of my house a haircut, um, a much needed haircut, and it looks great. So I do want to um, 
commend those folks over in the DPS for uh, for their quick and prompt actions on uh, just all the city services they provide. Um, I'd also like to thank, um, I, I had an opportunity to stop by the fire station the other day for a little, uh, for a pizza party. Um, and this was kind of coordinated between uh, city resident Lee Stewart and his friend Dean, as well as uh, Scott Haveman from, he's the, uh, uh, he's with the Little Caesars organization, a city resident as well. And um, they donated Little Caesars and, and these folks volunteered time and donated um, pizza and uh, chicken wings, I think, um, to the members of the police and fire department for a little uh, get together. Um, Director Voss was there um, as, uh, as well as uh, other members of the departments, both departments and uh, just a really nice, uh, Thing I thought they did for uh, for those members of the public safety. Um, so I wanted to thank those folks. And one quick question I have for Joanne is if you can contact me offline about pickleball courts. I've had some inquiries about pickleball courts and I know nothing about them. So um, maybe we could talk after, uh, maybe tomorrow on this. Other than that, um, again, thank, always thanking all of our uh, city employees for the great work they do and in the great efforts they make. So other than that, um, that's all I have tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councilman. Thank you. Uh, next up, Councilwoman Bon Crux. Oh, I have nothing tonight, Mayor, thank you. Thank you very much. Councilman Benedetti. Um, no, I'll just uh, um, piggyback off of Mr. Caberwatt and there. Um, thanks to the DPW for everything they did over the weekend. I was not here, but I heard that there was a few trees down, might have hit a car here or there on Grange. It looked like it might have hit the windshield, but they got a good, did a good job getting out there, getting stuff cleaned up. Um, and then just, you know, making sure that everything's picked up and people don't have that stuff laying around in their yards for days on end. Um, besides that, I have nothing else. Thank you very much, Councilman. Councilman Lefevre. Just a couple of things. The first one is, uh, the phone calls about the pool have died off. Joanne and Tim are doing a great job over there. Now the phone calls are from the hockey people, okay? And the big question is, why isn't the rink open? And I know the governor says this and says that. She's doing a great job, the governor is, but I don't think she understands the conditions. The kids in Trenton are playing hockey now. We may not want to admit or believe it, but they are. They're driving to Ohio to practice. They're going to Canton, Michigan to practice. They're going to different rinks in Michigan to practice. We have a facility which is very unique with three rinks. If it was open for practice, the kids go in different doors, going there to practice at the rink. There's plenty of locker rooms. You can have 15 or 16 kids on the ice practicing with no games. Okay. And I, I don't think maybe some of you think because uh our rink is closed that the kids aren't playing hockey, okay? And they're just sitting home. That's not true. They're out there playing. Uh, Tim, I wonder if you could comment on that, what, what I said, is that true or not true? Um, Tim is not on the call, Bill, but I'm happy to respond. Uh, Thank you. Um, no, you, you, are, you are correct. Um, there are arenas in our, even in the state of Michigan that are open. Many are private arenas. Uh, we did receive word that um, St. Clair Shores, uh, which is a municipal arena, is open. Um, and um, we understand that Southgate is planning to open um, August 1st. Um, so so there, uh, people are playing hockey. They, they are practicing. They are going to other arenas. Um, of course, the state of Ohio is under different executive um, orders. And uh, their arenas have been open for um, probably at least a month and a half or longer. Okay, my question is if other, other cities are opening their rinks. Uh, when it, and we have one of the safest rinks to open up to one by the, but we can separate the people, which is unique, okay? And the kids are going to play hockey no matter what. Why can't we open our rink and, and do the social distancing and use three different doors to come in and no games, just practices? <coughs> So if that question's to me, I'll answer it. Uh, as of right now, with there being no formal guidelines set forth by whether it be MAHA, MHSAA, uh, again, to my knowledge, um, that I'm not comfortable doing that. Um, I understand that, yes, there are people doing it, and that's their prerogative. Um, that's certainly, you know, something that we can't control. 
Um, but I'm not trying to make any kind of, you know, statement by doing so. I, I from that same token, kind of equated to, uh, you know, Councilman Von Crooks owns a salon in town. Uh, there was obviously some high profile cases of people that stayed open, um, that did their business and, you know, worked out fine for some, not so much for others. And that's fine. You know, if you want to choose to go do that, okay, that's not my prerogative, but I, I'm not going to be the one that says that, yes, I know better than the epidemiologists, um, that I know better than the Department of Health and Human Services um, or anything like that. So that's not something that uh, for me that I'm comfortable with right now um, that, you know, we'll see on you know, a week by week basis how this ends up playing out. Um, there's so much unknown right now, um, but I'm not looking to have Trenton be the, uh, you know, feature story on Channel 4 News uh, about, you uh, how we're defining these orders uh, to allow kids to practice. If they want to and want to go do it in other communities, I get it. And I know that that hurts us financially. I recognize that. Um, but I think that uh, in, the, in the broader scope of things, that that's uh, unfortunately just a, a sad reality that we're facing right now in the current pandemic. Um, but something that, uh, you know, I'm not looking to go out of our way when, you know, I have no background in medicine. I have no background in infectious diseases. Um, to be able to say that, yes, this is 100% safe. I don't know that. Um, if we were to get some more information from MAHA, from MHSAA, from other organizations that says, yes, here's what restrictions we put on place. Um, but to my knowledge, the other ranks that are doing it um, are doing so based on the restrictions and limitations just uh, sort of arbitrarily put forth um, by those cities' administrative uh, bodies. And, you know, while I have a lot of confidence in our administrative team, while I feel very good about the job that they're doing, um, I also recognize that we don't have any medical doctors or people with PhDs on staff um, that study these types of things. Uh, so as it stands right now, no, I have uh, no plans to uh, ask them to open up our rank uh, anytime soon. Um, I, it doesn't make me feel good to say that. Um, I don't want to say that. Um, but from the same token, I feel like I can't sleep soundly and feel like we're doing so responsibly by doing so at this point. No, my question was to notify the governor, explain our position where we're at, okay? Everybody in town is playing hockey, but they're not playing in Trenton. Does that mean they're not gonna get COVID because they're not playing hockey in Trenton? No, absolutely not. Sure. But I mean, we didn't know- that And that's totally fair. fair, yeah. But she understands. Uh, Just knowledge, so yeah, to my knowledge, and right, Joanne, feel free to interject uh, if I'm wrong, but that's sort of, uh, we had this conversation, it was probably a few weeks, maybe even a month ago, um, but there had been no formal discussions um, about reopening ice rinks per se. Um, so much of it was focused on summer activities um, that, you know, it was kind of like, oh yeah, this is a little bit too far on the line situation, but obviously we know here that you know, people play hockey year round, um, and then, you know, Michigan being a very unique place with that, but uh, in terms of communicating that position, at least saying, hey, give us some kind of framework where we can do that. Yeah, I have absolutely no problem. Uh, communicate Thank you. to her office and the legislature for that matter, too. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Thank you, Councilman. Did you have anything else? No, I just want to compliment you and this administration doing a great job during this COVID thing. I'm sick and tired of the uh, online meetings, okay? You and me both, trust me. <laughs> I can only hear about half of it. I don't know what was going on, but I, I couldn't hear what people were saying. So. Sure. No, I appreciate you, and thank you for, for grinning and bearing it with us. Um, great. So next up, we've got Councilman Perugia. Good evening, everybody. And just a quick note, just like uh, Mr. Benedetti and Mr. Cabo-Watton did, I'd like to thank the DPW and their excellent service over the weekend. Um, it was, a, it was a mess and they did a great job. And other than that, I have nothing to add. Thank you very much, Councilman. Appreciate that. Um, and lastly, but certainly not least, Councilwoman Pate. I, I, I do have quite a long list, so, <laughs> oh, so just great. bear with me. Uh, I know, you know me, I like to talk. Um, I just wanted to bring up the fact that uh, the mayor and I have been talking about um, establishing or actually resurrecting some commissions that are in our city charter that could be beneficial to our city at this time. If we could get a chance to talk about that in the future, that would be the cultural commission and the port commission. Um, I also wanted to uh, raise awareness to the Wheeling Wednesdays uh, activities. It is a 
uh, bike ride. It's a tour of the city. There are now two tours that are out. One is an introduction to the city of Trenton downtown, and the other is an introduction to uh, the DIA exhibit. If you have not had a chance to stop and see those uh, pieces of art in the uh, nature, their natural surroundings that they're located in, they're just beautiful and breathtaking. Uh, and you can take a tour um, using ActionBound. It's a free app. Um, I also like to thank so far the um, Custard Corner and Elizabeth Perk were the first businesses to um, partner with us on that last week for coupons and trying to uh, generate business in the downtown. And then this week uh, until Wednesday, if you finish the bound, you have a coupon waiting for you either at uh, the Framery or the Promenade, as well as the Trenton Trib offices. There will be newspapers there available for free. Um, let's see, I've also had a lot of inquiries about fixing the railroad tracks on King Road. I'm just gonna list these just to put them out there so that we can think about what we're gonna do in some, at some time, but the railroad tracks on King Road have been an issue, especially since people are using King Road a little bit more from the um, construction. Um, I'm also wondering if we have any communication with the city of Riverview about the trash hill. And I didn't bring it up, I for, totally forgot at the last meeting, but in that time about, um, about our last meeting, which was roughly July 6th, over the July 4th weekend, they had a horrible experience with the smells there again, even after Mayor, you've already talked with the city of Riverview and they've given us all these assurances. So is there something moving forward that we can tell these residents, give them an update um, because there have been problems even since then in the month of July? Yeah, um, I, Scott, I'd have to actually ask uh, you because I know we got, uh, and I, I unfortunately don't have it in front of me and my internet's working a little too slow to uh, pull it up, but we did get some kind of communication from Riverview in the last few weeks. It might have been right around then. I can't remember if it was before or after about something. That I don't remember if it was a new um, agent, but Scott, I guess it, it, all of you heard from uh, the other be the landfill director or the city directly. Let's make sure my microphone is on. Yes, uh, I actually uh, just got an email uh, uh, late this afternoon from the city manager in Riverview uh, giving us another update. Uh, they are involved with doing some pre land preserve improvements uh, that includes, uh, as I explained, they're, they're drilling additional wells and installing collection pipes for their gas collection system. As they explained it uh, to us, uh, they're going to be, when they're doing the boring for the additional wells uh, to uh, help uh, capture the methane recovery, uh, that's used for their uh, for their uh, energy producing plant at the site, but also is designed to reduce odors. They did give us the heads up that while they are drilling into these or doing the boring um, until they get the uh, actual pieces in place so that they can capture it and send it to their plant to uh, uh, make energy from it, uh, that there is some odor when they actually do the boring and the drilling. Uh, that uh, this said, uh, there will be on occasion uh, as they're doing the drilling and boring for each well uh, that they are starting Monday, July 20th and for up to the next six weeks as they are drilling these uh, additional uh, wells. So I don't know how often, I don't take that to mean they are going to be drilling every day, um, but there were a number of things that uh, it, it is uh, or was explained to me this is my, my phrase or characterization out there is that this is more of a short-term pain for a long-term gain, um, that it is meant to help mitigate uh, the odors coming in the future um, and also to help uh, for the energy production and collection from the site. Okay, thank you. I wish they would find a different time of year to do that. I, you know, people have their windows open, it's summer, the, you know, smells are even worse. Is there, um, you know, are they, welcoming us into like uh, monthly meetings or briefings or anything or do they just you know comment on things as as it goes and I mean, how much communication is really between us they just kind of let us know and then the residents have to the residents are constantly complaining and it doesn't seem like there's it doesn't seem like the residents should have to be the ones that are proactive here on this issue so is there anything we can do to engage the city and get these heads up and get that information out to residents. It's got to be something we can do for them. 
I, I can speak for myself. Uh, their city manager is in regular contact with me, okay. advising and, and giving a courtesy of when they're starting things. Um, I'm under the impression, based on the communication that he sent, that they are keeping things updated through the Riverview Land Preserves Facebook post. Um, I can't speak to that. I'm, I'm not a social media guy that follows Facebook. Um, but uh, it appears, um, or I, I'm under the impression that they are trying to communicate through the Riverview Land Preserves Facebook uh, page about some of the updates. Um, okay. I haven't seen any yet on that six week process. So I'll have to let residents know and that, you know, and, and to look out for that on the Facebook page. Yes, okay. and, and actually just to clarify, because um, in one area it says that it's running through early uh, September uh, under a character or um, it's characterized as a Facebook post uh, reads RLP or the Riverview Landfill Preserve We'll be starting a well drilling project next week that will run through mid-August. New wells will allow RLP to improve its gas collection system and to capture more landfill gas from escaping into the air. Complaints or questions, please contact the Riverview Landfill Preserve. So I'm, I'm hoping for all of our sake that it's more that mid-August than September, uh, but uh, yeah. Okay, um, and then I have a question for Chief Shuffler. If anyone was able to um, just communicate with Amaria Hall's mother, April Hall, I don't need to know what was communicated or what, and you know, I'm sure you can't share updates on the case, but I just want to make sure that um, the city is at least contacting her once a month with updates on her daughter's case of disappearance. Do we have any information on that? Yes, the detective that's assigned to the case um, gives her regular updates. Okay. Um, you know, I, there's nothing really new going on with the case that I can talk about. Yep. And we have our partners um, at both the state and the federal level that work with us on this case. And, you know, they're looking all the time. We're looking all the time. Uh, yep. But yep. the detective assigned does reach out to her and update her. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I think it's important to keep those lines of communications open with her. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. I think, I think that's almost it. Hang on one second. Let me check my notes. Um, yeah. And I guess the only other thing I'll close with is that there will be that public hearing on Wednesday at 7 p.m. And I am just looking forward to constructive discussion uh, that can be helpful to council and to the planning commission in regards to our entire city's zoning map. I think it's extremely important that we uh, cross all our T's and dot the I's and look toward the future and make sure that, you know, this is the plan that's gonna help us be sustainable and resilient in the future. Um, and I, I have sent all my initial questions that I had after my analysis to each council member uh, so that you can have an idea of what my concerns are and I don't have to list them right now. So if you would like to check your email, um, I've sent you a little bit of information. So I appreciate uh, you're looking that over and uh, having some discussion about what's next for our city. So I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Councilwoman. Appreciate that. Uh, so nothing else from Council. Do we have any department heads uh, wishing to give anyone an update? Mayor, I do have a few items I'd like to mention. Okay, we'll, we'll just say uh, we'll wait and see department heads and I'll, I'll go to you and uh, Mr. Dahlquist and uh, Treasurer. So I think Paul's got his hand up here too. We'll do uh, just him first as department head. Paul, you're on mute if you're trying to speak. Can you hear me now, sir? Yes, absolutely. There you go. Okay. Uh, to answer uh, Councilperson uh, Lefevre's on the uh, skating, 
the executive order 115 only applies basically to the upper peninsula and the area over by traverse city 110 is the one that still applies to us as region 2. section 12 of 110 sir and i'm sorry to read it to you subject to the exceptions of section 14 the following places are closed to ingress egress use and occupancy and if you go down to number e again i'm going to read it indoor services or facilities or outdoor services or facilities involving close contact of persons for amusement or other recreational or entertainment purposes such as amusement park arcades bingo halls bowling alleys indoor climbing facilities indoor dance areas skating rinks trampoline parks and other similar recreation or entertainment facilities so I would uh, submit, sir, that the Recreation Department is following the executive orders to the letter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Haley. Uh, do we have any other department heads uh, before we move on? Going once, going twice, sold. All right, Madam Clerk, what do you have for us tonight? Okay, thank you. I would like to just mention that nomination petitions are available for Trenton School Board trustee positions. There are three openings on the November 3rd ballot. So this is petitions for Trenton School Board trustee. It's a six year term and those names will be put on the November 3rd general election ballot. Petitions can be picked up between the hours of 8.30 and 5 p.m. The deadline is tomorrow, July 21st by 4 p.m. And in lieu of getting signatures, school board does have the um, option to pay a $100 petition filing fee in lieu of getting signatures if someone wishes to do that. I just wanted to make sure everybody knows that that deadline is tomorrow by 4 p.m. Um, I'd also like to mention the absentee ballots for the August 4th state primary election are available in the clerk's office. If you'd like to vote absentee, you can pick up absentee ballots in the clerk's office Monday through Friday, 8.30 till 5. The clerk's office will be open on Saturday, August 1st from 8.30 until 5 for absentee voting. And the state primary election is on Tuesday, August 4th. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then lastly, I'd just like to mention that the next regular council meeting will be on Monday, August 3rd. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate that, Madam Clerk. Uh, Mr. Dahlquist, do you have anything for us this evening? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I would like to inform the public that tomorrow, Tuesday, July 21st, is the date for the July Board of Review. We are meeting here at City Hall in the Commission's Room. The meeting time is from 9 a.m. to noon and 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Due to Governor Whitmer's executive order, property owners will have the opportunity to protest their 2020 assessment at this July Board of Review. This is only for those property owners that did not protest at the March Board of Review and we're concerned with the COVID outbreak in the spring. Um, the July board will also correct mutual mistakes of facts and clerical errors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dawkins. Appreciate that. And Mr. McCullough, do you have anything for us tonight? Hearing nothing, I will uh, make the dangerous assumption that that means nothing. Um, so uh, moving on, and that uh, covers department heads, elected officials. Uh, I wanna see if we have any comment from the public this evening. Uh, if anyone uh, would like to address this body, please state your name and address. We ask that you limit your comments to five minutes and please direct all questions through me, the chair. Um, please use the raised hand feature uh, for you if possible here too. Um, and we'll make sure that you get called on. Um, I have a question. Oh, yes, uh, Sue. 
Hi, what's Paul's last name who was talking about the um, roar on the river? Uh, that would be Paul Jacks. Can you spell that, please? J O C S. One more time, please. J O C K S. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you very much, Sue. Do we have any other uh, public comment this evening? I do not see any hands raised. Seeing none, we would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Well support. Support. Uh, it's been moved and supported. And uh, so I'd say that uh, assuming that there's no objection and this passes, that we take a five minute break before we start the study session and give everyone a quick chance to grab a glass of water, use the restroom as needed. Uh, so is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Pate? Yes. Peruzzi? Yes. Rizepa? Yes. Von Crooks? Yes. Benedetti? Yes. Cabawatton? Yes. Lefevre? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rizepa. And right, I just want to let everybody know, I will just pause this recording. And if you want to stay on for the study session, we will stay on the same meeting. So nobody has to log off and log back in. Okay. I will uh, give everyone the warning that uh, I might have my video off to switch to the desktop computer in here because there's no camera there and my cell phone battery where I'm using the hotspot is dying. So. Uh, with that, uh, we'll adjourn here at 8.47. Let's plan to reconvene the study session. Like I said, grab a glass of water, um, use the restroom if need be, at 8.52 here. So, all right, talk to you all in a little bit here. Timber, is that you? It's me. I, I, I can see Scott Church. You can't see me. I can see I you. Can see, I can see Bill of Fever at times. Can you see me? <laughs> when your strobe light's flashing, yes. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> you guys might want to remember that you're not always muted. Oh, you're kidding oh, me. Great. Thanks. <laughs> what the hell happened to you? Huh? What do you mean? That retirement beard got something going on over there, right? <laughs> yeah. You look good, Steve. Thanks, Timber. I'll have to have you groom it. I will, honey. You come in, I'll give you a nice trim. <laughs> Yeah. Are there any more questions? <laughs> no. Okay. We're not going to reconvene, or we are. I never saw a two-hour meeting with one item on the agenda. Oh my God! I'm, I'm going to have a talk about some people. Everybody talks too long, <laughs> including us. Scott, are we all on board now? I thought we were supposed to reconvene in five minutes. That's what I thought. Where is everybody?
Sorry about that, everyone. I was trying to log in on the other computer, and then uh, it turns out I don't have a microphone on that one either, so I can see where that might be an issue for me. Um, yeah, not, there, 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 yeah, that sounds good to me. Um, so, all right. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have everyone here? I love these Zoom meetings. <laughs> okay. Can I you never hear me? had to do another Zoom meeting in the entirety of my life. It would probably be too. Exactly. Okay. It looks like we have all council back. All right. Here. Great. <clears throat> so we've uh, we've got the whole group back in here. So for our uh, Zoom meeting, uh, we've got a study session here uh, for the purpose of discussing uh, potential. Uh, marijuana ordinance. So I wanted to kind of just, you know, start by, uh, before uh, you know, I'll turn it over to administration, uh, to Scott and Anthony uh, to talk about, uh, you know, how we may or may not, for that matter, go about this. Um, but I do want to thank you know, everyone again uh, for those who may not have uh, been in the regular meeting that have tuned in for this. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, really wish that we were able to do this in person um, you know, as was the intention uh, a couple months back when uh, we had initially planned on having this meeting, um, we thought, oh, okay, well, it'll be safer in a couple months, we'll do it in person. Um, but, you know, so life goes, always has a funny way of laughing at us. Um, we pushed it back and the world being a strange place, um, we had to shift this online again here too. Um, just for safety purposes, I'm going to make sure that having to attend this meeting in person um, with everything going on wasn't a deterrent for anyone um, who had questions or who wanted to be able to attend or participate or speak out on the issue. Um, so I think that, you know, as a whole, just to kind of recap, the most important thing is for us to all be able to get together to talk about this issue um, and how we feel about it in the same place. It's the first opportunity we've had to do so. I'm um, the first with, uh, you know, myself serving as mayor, um, with Councilman Benedetti serving as mayor pro tem, and then with uh, Councilman Cabot and Councilwoman Pate on council. Um, you know, it's something we've been talking about in some way, shape, or form for something like four years now. Um, and I think that, you know, as a whole, this is uh, time for us to finally give residents um, and prospective business owners an answer one way or the other um, so that they have uh, just frame of reference to do and expect with their operations and day-to-day -day livelihood. Um, you know, we've talked about this uh, dozens of times over the last several years. Um, and I've been, I think at least has been fairly clear about my position. Um, and, you know, to this point, it still remains the same where I've expressed uh, time before that I'm okay with a limited amount of grow and processing facilities for medical or recreational operations. Um, I do not um, support having dispensaries or retail sales, um, provisioning centers in town um, and things of that nature. So I do want to you know, continue to make that clear um, for any of you watching. Um, you know, we've got facilities of this nature operating in town already, and uh, frankly, the only difference um, that if we were to explore something like this would be the number of plants that are allowed inside their buildings. Um, our police department, our fire department, um, our inspectors have inspected all of the operations that we currently have. Um, they've their safety and security, um, and have uh, even as of uh, late last week assured me that we haven't had any issues uh, from a safety and security standpoint or code enforcement or anything like that so far. Um, I think it's important uh, that we, you know, continue, if we go down this route, uh, prohibitions on any kind of signage advertising, um, that all remains strict so that it doesn't draw any kind of unwanted attention. Um, but all that being said, uh, this is something that uh, you know, I have not talked to uh, Anthony directly about uh, at any great length. Um, it's not coming, you know, again at this point with any kind of formal recommendation from administration. Um, and I think that this is just a good opportunity for us to get our heads together, see how we feel, and see, um, you know, how we may want to direct administration uh, to explore this uh, opportunity. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I know a lot of people feel strongly about this issue, um, but if I'm being honest, I don't see it as something that's going to be like a poison pill cure-all for uh, financial woes for us, uh, nor do I see it as something that's going to have any sort of transformative negative effect for our community. I think that, you know, realistically, we're probably going to end up in a position where 95% of residents at minimum have no idea that anything is any different. 
Um, I do want to stress again, too, that we're not here uh, to discuss the merits of in favor or against of the ballot initiatives that were passed in Michigan um, in 2008 or in 2018. Um, these are laws of the land that passed uh, overwhelmingly in both situations. Whether we agree with them or not, um, it's our responsibility and job to deal with it and figure out what the past forward, best path forward is for our community um, or not, for that matter. Um, if it's something we're going to do, I think it's important to know what our options are and what benefits it can bring to our community. Um, and that if uh, it is something we do decide uh, not to do, um, that we owe it to everyone that has been inquiring for years to finally give them an answer here. Um, I do think overall the most important questions I have uh, surrounding this are what benefits can it bring our residents by passing something like this um, and how for that matter too if we were to get down that line how do we go about creating a transparent and fair application process um, that does guarantee benefits for our residents um, and is fair again to all parties involved. Um, so with that uh, first off I'd actually like to turn it over to Scott um, to just kind of get started um, and then if uh, we'll get into uh, him and Anthony uh, may have some things to say and then we can uh, get into questions from council from there and just kind of gauge the overall temperature from the group. Scott? Mayor? Yep, Councilman Lefever. Yeah, how many people do we have online watching? Uh, we have 42. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Church? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, you gave a, a very thorough uh, overview and update uh, of where uh, we have been in the past, what's led us up to today. And I don't think you could have stated it better yourself, uh, or I could have stated it better myself that we, we have a new composition um, uh, it, with the unfortunate passing of Mayor Stack. Um, we've had a change. Um, you are now in a mayoral role, role compared to council and councilwoman Pate and councilman Cabawatton are new to the process. Uh, so from my standpoint, I think administratively, it would be good to just get a read on what the current appetite is or is not. Um, for the council as a whole. Um, and uh, I, I should, I guess, back up from a matter of introduction. I know you're all familiar with Alan Ackerman from him, uh, his attendance at uh, numerous council meetings, uh, but I would like to introduce uh, uh, in the center square on my screen anyway is Anthony Bologna, who is an associate uh, with Alan uh, at his firm and uh, will be uh, the contact person uh, if we decide to do any work um, or do any research uh, along the marijuana lines uh, is much more uh, something he is much more familiar uh, with than, than Alan and would be working and advising Alan along those lines. So uh, Anthony Bologna is with us tonight. Um, but again, I guess going back to uh, the mayor's uh, explanation or what he was looking for, I would welcome some uh, some perspectives or, or ideas from the council. Um, as you may recall, we did have a, a first reading of an ordinance. It was, uh, it never came to a second reading, uh, but it was uh, contemplated to allow uh, growing and processing centers uh, for medical marijuana only. It was in a one mile designated area um, west of West Jefferson east of the railroad tracks, north of King Road, south of Stiff Road. Um, if that is still the flavor or the preference of the council, um, or if there's an alternative, uh, that if there is no longer um, a, uh, a willingness uh, to go along those lines, we just need to know if there's a different flavor um, that uh, the council would like us uh, to research and get back with them. I think that's the direction administration and Anthony need to have uh, so that we can provide you with the information you need. Okay. I, Scott. Yes. Yeah, I, we talked about that and I brought up the deal about uh, allowing on the east side of uh, Jefferson. I, I brought that up at the meeting. Right. Yes, and, and Bill, I, I will say that, you know, whatever the council's pleasure is, uh, under my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, Anthony, but under the state uh, law, it can, these facilities can be permitted in any industrial or agriculturally zoned areas. So um, whether it is across the road or any of the other industrial areas of town, 
uh, would be permitted uh, areas under the state law. Okay, thank you. Is that accurate, Anthony? That is. So I, I think at this point, uh, Scott, you know, I, I don't know if you had anything else to add, but I think it probably would make the most sense for us uh, just as a body to open it up to council here um, to see, you know, just gauge what the overall temperature is. Um, because, you know, this is that if we, I don't want to tell Anthony and Alan, hey, start working on something for us for this if this is an absolute no go. But I think that we need even just, you know, the goal here would be to, if this is something we want to explore, to even get just some sort of baseline parameters of, hey, here's things that are absolute no-goes that we do not want to see. Here's things that we have questions about. And to kind of just compile, you know, an overarching list of these things and see, you know, what in their professional legal opinion they can come back with uh, that might make sense for us. And, you know, like I said, uh, the big question for me is what what benefits can this bring our residents um you know through the application process i've seen a few different cities and others operate um and you know the different criteria but what that could look like and, you know, what again what's our motivation to do this is that uh you know outside of just sort of of course you know the uh you know refurbished buildings the additional tax revenue but is there anything tangible that we can get um, and like I've said, I'm okay with growing and processing. I am not okay with dispensaries, provisioning centers and the likes, um, but do think that there is a place for the rest. And frankly, from that matter, um, you know, uh, the only real difference that we'd see in some of these situations is the number of plants inside the building. And would any of us have any idea that any of that's going on? No. Um, no. Just, uh, right, and uh, if this is something that if we can bring, you know, some tax revenue into the coffers for it, if we can find what we do, uh, whether it be, uh, you know, bring money in for our infrastructure, for special events, um, for capital improvement, and things like that, if that can be a part of it, that would be kind of my overarching question is, you know, what, what tangible benefits we could have. But um, you know, I'd like to open it up to anyone else on council that uh, would like to express their opinion, uh, any reservations that they may have, so we can try and at least get a framework going forward of what makes sense for us here. Mayor? Yeah, Councilwoman Ron Crooks. Um, yeah, I'm uh, on board with exactly what you're on board with. I think you stated it very clearly. Um, it is legal. The residents have voted for it. Um, I think uh, medicinally, I know a lot of people in my age group and older that are supporting, you know, this kind of thing because it's a natural pain free type of uh, business for them, you know, that they need. And uh, I've done a lot of research on, on, on this in the last few months. And uh, I believe that, uh, you know, the residents in the state of Michigan have spoken. Um, I am not for, you know, street sales, like you said, dispensaries on the street. Um, but one thing I do have a question about, and I don't know if this is going to start at a state level or if we can send a resolution, something it is. I think, and I know for a fact that they make a ton of money. They're, this is a huge, huge business. Um, the 150 plants is great. 1,500 is obviously greater. And my providing police and fire protection and this and that for these kind of facilities. And I just think that a $5,000 permit to go ahead and do this is not enough money. I think uh, the state has set down that kind of, you know, permitting fee. But I, I really think that the cities deserve to make a little bit more money um, on these kind of endeavors because there's a lot of money to be made. And which, hey, I'm happy for the people making money. But I just think that there's got to be a bigger benefit for the city, if the cities. That's my only thing. But I, I'm, I'm not opposed to going forward with this whole project. Thank you very much, Councilwoman. I appreciate that. Mayor. I think that's a very fair question, too. So, yep, Councilman Lefevre. Yeah, I, I, I agree with what you said and what Timber said, okay? The whole idea behind it is we can't ask them for a donation to the city, okay? But then they can make a donation on their own, okay? Right. They could donate something to the city, and it's happened in other states like out in Colorado, okay, where the developers came in and made a donation to the city, and we, I would be happy to accept them, but we can't go out and ask for it or beg for it. 
that's that's the issue that we're into okay and uh but i do support allowing it uh it's down there we have to get more revenue i think we got 160 bucks more or, or 80 bucks more in taxes that john Dawkins would tell us but what it does it stops the decay some of those buildings downtown were in terrible shape and they came along and fixed them up nobody knows they're there okay and uh they become an asset to the city to stop deteriorating downtown and uh, hopefully that'll continue and the people running the operations have been first class you, you can't get a better group than the molinos in town they've always been very supportive of trenton they're first class people and we're lucky to have people like that involved in it so i'm uh, very supportive of them Thank you, Councilman. I appreciate that. Um, I guess from that token, that's uh, you raised a good point there. Is this would be a question for Anthony, and I don't mean to totally put you on the spot here, but um, you know what? And this could be a frankly kind of a gray area too. What kind of leeway do we have um, per Michigan law um, for asking for the you know community benefits piece um, that Councilman Lefevre may have mentioned? Uh, is that something that's permissible in the application process? Uh, is that sort of like a you know, bonus point criteria type thing, or is that something that can be just baked right into it? Some communities have put that in as like a bonus type, so it's a, it's a holistic view on the application process. They'll say, how are you benefiting the community? What are you doing to, to better the property? Um, so it, that becomes a factor if there's gonna be a point system associated. The caution I would give, and some of the issues other cities have uh, are facing, is when there's too much discretion in that area. Uh, whatever direction council wants to go in and if council decides that this is what they wanna do, uh, you know, the, the advice I would give is everything needs to be open and transparent and to eliminate any, uh, any possibility where there could be discretion by council uh, where someone could say, you know what, they favored this person for whatever reason it may be. Uh, going back to the fees, uh, cities, charge application fees, which range in value for these types of licenses. Uh, so that's one way to generate revenue is through application fees. There's also renewal fees that cities charge uh, and those range considerably in value as well. So, so there's different different options to explore. This is what council wants to do um, and different ways to, to you know increase the revenue through application fees. Uh, another thing that commonly will happen is once the city makes this announcement, uh, depending on where that zone is, if there's going to be a zone, property values will kind of increase. Uh, so that will increase the tax basis there as well. Uh, so there's there's different ways. I, I, I would not recommend saying uh, if one person makes a large donation to the city, then they would get a license because uh, that would just get out of control. Mm -hmm. And uh, whoever is the highest bidder, and the, I mean, there might be people who will say, I'll give you a million dollar donation. And uh, if the city takes it, I, I would not recommend that. Oh, great. Thank you. That's, that's extraordinary. Um, so does anyone else from uh, council here have any sort of uh, thoughts that they want to add or concerns? Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, okay. So a uh, couple things. First of all, I, I partially agree with your, your thought process on um, processing, not dispensary or provisionary centers. Um, Right now, and I'm kind of the new person, obviously, we said a couple times tonight, um, but I'm not sure if I'm sold necessarily on recreational um, marijuana. Uh, I can see a, a need for medicinal um, and, and going down that aspect as uh, far as a, a growth operation and processing of medicinal. Um, not sure if I'm really sold on the, the recreational component of that, but um, as I learn more, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm not firm in my ways at this point in time on the issue. A um, couple questions is um, licensing, application, number of locations. I don't think we've really determined any of that, or did we in that first reading? No. Okay, thank you. Councilman Lefevre. So I guess just for, for point of clarification too, I'm kind of belief that 
we, we start from square one on this with the new group. Um, we've got new legal counsel um, that we, we don't base it off of the first reading of the previous one um, that we, and if it requires an extra meeting, so be it. Um, but just to make sure that we're doing it right and doing it thoroughly, we've got a new group here. So I, I wouldn't, and that's just, maybe other people feel differently, but from my frame of reference that it would probably need to hit the refresh button as a whole. No, and, and quite honestly, you, you read my mind because I'm, I, I mean, in my mind, I would think there would be another meeting and, you know, we were obviously there, there's lots of people, I think, in the room um, that are pro it, but I think maybe it, it may be beneficial to hear um, and, and maybe not, maybe at the advice of legal counsel, maybe this is not a good idea, but do we hear some of those folks that are already engaged in the business right now um, hear what their experience has been so far. Um, maybe answer some questions that we, we may have on, you know, security, um, nuisance odors, um, some of those generalizations, as well as there's going to be some folks that are not, that are opposed to this as well. And I think we probably owe them the opportunity to um, air their concerns as well on the issue too. I mean, just to be fair, um, I don't want to have a, you know, a, a, a giant public hearing, but I don't know, maybe that is the, that is maybe the more appropriate route. And I, and I just lean to your, um, you know, I, I'd lean to your thoughts and suggestion on that. Yeah, no, we, we definitely would be having a public hearing, would have to discuss this at least have two readings and a public hearing for sure. So everyone certainly will. This is mostly just sort of a, let's get our heads together to see, is this even, Thing that we want to have legal counsel expend any time over. See, so just kind of get a rough frame of reference, see what options that they can come up with for us um, that would make sense, and then would proceed uh, from that that point. But I think that you know, like I said, this is the first opportunity that this group has um, has had to talk about this issue together. Um, so to just be able to get that rough frame of reference to say okay, there's no point in us dragging this out for another year if, uh, you know, we've got five people that are adamant no's no matter what. Um, so to see what kind of parameters really are palatable for council. Um, and, you know, like I said, I, I threw mine out there and uh, I know expect others to do the same, but just more of a brainstorming session. And we'll certainly have the opportunity for the public to participate, um, have that public hearing, the multiple readings and whatnot too. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think that if we chose to do nothing and go down that route of doing nothing, you're still going to have it within the community. You're still sure. going to have it at in, isolated independently at homes. You're also going to have it at some industrial buildings that fall under, and, and for those of you that are more expert than, than I am, you're going to have that caregiver, they're falling under that caregiver um, title of what, um, 150 plants or something to that nature, if I'm not mistaken. So you're still going to have it. It's just a question of, you know, do you have more of it still in an isolated area and maybe more uh, regulated than, um, than what it currently is? And I think that's really sure. the question. So, I mean, Reader's Digest uh, or, or um, you know, uh, shortened version. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested in at least exploring it more to see what, uh, you know, see what opportunity is out there and, and see, you know, both sides, a little bit more both sides of the story and what a possible ordinance would look like. But if I understood the um, somebody's comment, can it go in all industrial or can we still isolate it to a specific geographic area with a specific zone? Scott and Anthony, I'll defer to you guys on that one. Uh, it, uh, Councilman, to answer your question, is, is we have uh, discussed it in the past. Um, it was looked at more as an overlay <laughs> in that bow tie district. Again, uh, north of King, south of Sibley, on the west side of West Jefferson, east of the railroad track, it was the only area that was contemplated before. My understanding of state law is if the community wished to have that in more than one area, 
Um, it could be as broad as any industrial or agriculturally zoned areas. We wanted to have prohibitions that are uh, enforceable and uh, aren't uh, in violation of the state law about uh, proximity to residential churches, schools, playgrounds, things of that nature. We could put requirements like that. Um, but uh, short, I guess in between that, is if there were to be multiple districts, even if there were two or three districts, um, if the council wished to say, we are gonna allow it in these industrially zoned areas, uh, you could have more than one area. There's nothing magic that it has to be in that one mile strip, um, if that's the desire of the council. Or correct me if I've misspoke on any of that, Anthony. No, uh, and what I'll do right now for the meeting is I'm gonna put a big legal caveat for any speculators that may be tuned in or get the transcript of this later. Uh, the area that's being described was a proposed area by last council. It hasn't been designated, nor has this council decided that this is what they wanna do. So don't speculate that that's going to be the area. Uh, the, you know, it's all up to this council uh, um, where if they do decide there's going to be a designated area, um, it's, it, that will be determined at a later date. So uh, just throwing that out there because people sometimes will say, you said it will be this area and I bought property and, and now it's not this area. So uh, we, just need to, we need to have that disclaimer out there that you know, council is just in discussion at this point and there is not a designated area at this point. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. I'm Councilman Perugia. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Anthony brought up a point that I was going to bring up is that I was concerned of, even though they're in the district now as caregivers, it wasn't a guarantee, and, and I'm concerned of how many uh, sites we can have, because if you get four, then the fifth guy is going to have a lawsuit. If you have five, it's going to be the sixth guy. So I'm just, you know, those are my concerns. The legal concerns are my concerns. I, su I support having it. I just want to make sure that we're protected legally from the, from the whole process. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, an incredibly fair point and probably one of, if not my primary concern as well here too, to make sure that that application process that, right, we, we can't just arbitrarily make promises. Um, it was easy as that would be um, that unfortunately, right, like you said, that that's just the fastest way to end up uh, in litigation and, I've got enough gray hairs um, and I've had to use the phrase uh, far too much uh, that uh, I'm not interested in doing so any, any further than that. Um, but yeah, no, I, and I'd certainly, you know, trust Anthony's expertise um, if we were to go forward with this to make sure that before anything that was passed, um, enough in that regard. Um, and we watch out, we, you know, uh, it's an old saying my dad taught me that uh, this stuck with me since I was a little kid, that smart people don't learn from their own mistakes, they learn from other people's. Um, so we've had an opportunity the last year and a half or so to see how some other communities may have screwed this up, um, have found themselves in those litigation and take the opportunity that we can to be able to learn from that. Um, and, you know, that is so desired by this body. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, well, thank you. So if anyone else from council looking to speak or any other comment? Yeah, Stephen, I would. Oh yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think so far everybody's talked about the same exact reason I think we're here today. So we never got anywhere with the previous legal team. We sort of hamstringed them there and said we were pushing it off, pushing it off, reread it, rewrite it, everything else. And we do have the two new people on the council, so we need to know what their thoughts are. But I think you know, most of the that we need out of this is what Scott and Wendy are feeling, and also Anthony and Al, what their recommendations are and how they would propose something. I mean, that's what we're paying for. So we need to have them draw something up, tell us what they think. I think the planning and zoning has already discussed it a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, we need to decide what we're gonna do, where we're gonna do it, I mean, when this first started and we talked about that general area, I can remember the former administrator telling us, well, yeah, but what about the north? What about the south end down there off of um, oh, Toledo and all that? Hoover. Yeah, rope. Yeah. It, it, you know, we never thought about that. But I mean, those are things that 
between everybody. They have to come up with that and give us advice on what we need to do with this. Um, I will add that I think, if I'm not mistaken, one of the new council members had gone for a tour of there. I would recommend everybody on this council has goes through that building and takes a tour. You'd be amazed at the security issues and everything else they do there. I, I was, I never thought it was going to be like that. And you know, so I just think that's what we need to do is we need to get their feelings on it and get moving with some type of ordinance that can be presented to us and then present it to the public to hear their comments on it. That's it. No, I, I think that's uh, incredibly fair. Um, and a good point too, that right, being able to see it and kind of understand what it is and what it is not um, is certainly important to kind of get these, these things look like here. Um, and so I think a question I'd have for probably both Scott and Anthony here is, I guess you know, if we were to kind of go forward with this framework and start exploring an actual ordinance, um, what are the questions that you would need answered from us um, before you got started on something like that in terms of framework of, uh, frankly, any of it. Uh, you know, I, obviously this is not my forte. Um, so what, what questions would council need to answer for you to be able to at least get the ball rolling with something like this? Actually, Mayor, if, if before we respond to that, I don't know that Councilwoman Pate has had an opportunity to speak yet if she wanted to offer uh, her insight, um, so we would have a full view of the council. Sure, yeah, Councilor, I don't, don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm going. I have my hand raised. I'm trying to do the right thing here. Be I'm sorry, I did not see that. Yeah, my fault there. That's okay. Um, I guess um, I am a person who uh, is concerned about people like my grandmother who might want to drive quite a distance to get what she needs to uh, feel more comfortable. Uh, you know, my grandma passed and um, we had, you know, the opportunity to try and help her pain management. Um, so I feel for those people and I wish there was a very small way that we could offer some kind of uh, dispensary for people that, to have a safe, quiet place to go. Uh, but I don't think there is support for that, despite the fact that our city did um, pass, uh, you know, the um, recreational marijuana um, proposal. Uh, it was it was close. You know, 55% is not you know a huge majority. So I, I get that. I don't hear from you that you would like to do that. On the other hand, um, I am concerned that we already have growers in this particular district, and if we say that we are going to maintain it to that district, are we not um, as open in this process as possible? Do we set ourselves up because, oh, hey, they're already there, so let's just put this overlay district on it. So I am in favor of um, allowing for the recreational growth and the um, uh, medical growth, that's fine. Um, I know where those buildings are. I chose not to tour them out of the sense that I don't want to show any favoritism, um, but I do rely on the police and fire and um, building reports that say that there have been no violations. That's, that's the, uh, the expertise that I need to know, so I appreciate that. Um, so I am wondering if we are better off as a city because we already have, I've heard, three growers that you know, we can't just say, okay, well, we're going to allow three permits. I feel like that may put us in jeopardy. So now we're kind of stuck where we might have to say we're going to open it up to other areas or, um, uh, you know, expand the number of growers. Because if we say we're going to have three and then, oh, there happens to be three, you know, then, you know, isn't that convenient? So I don't want the city to be put in any harm's way at that point. Um, so I do think we need to look where we're going to zone it. However, there is a proposed industrial waterfront zoning out there and I do not want any growing along the river. That is not the place for a business like that. That is not the type of business I would like to see along the waterfront. So I would be very cautious right now of saying that we want it in an industrial, any industrial district. Um, I would prefer perhaps to keep it in the I-2 regions that are out there. I 
think that may also cover the bow tie district we're talking about currently that might be i2 um, but if we open it up to just any industrial water that could that could be on the waterfront uh, where we'd have buildings going up for that and i don't think that's the place that they should go um, and then after we decide you know i think there has to be a, a like Anthony said, a, a clear, transparent process. So we decide where the zoning is, we decide how many licenses to award, and then we go through that process of how do these people get those licenses without already knowing what they're doing. Let's just do it from a legal standpoint, what other cities are doing. If they happen to meet it, great. If they don't, then they can choose to, you know, beef it up a little bit if we think they need to. So that's the direction that I need um, from our attorneys. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for that, Councilman. I, I appreciate that. And yeah, really, really agree on a lot of those points. And I think that uh, it's more of right, just at this point, just in the temperature from everyone to see, um, you know, what, what we might want to be looking at. There. If I could add, I don't think we should take a huge more amount of time on this. I think we need to, you know, I'm a person that likes timelines. So I think it needs to be done quickly you know let's not take two more months to come up with a plan and two more months to do this let's try and wrap it all up in a, a certain time frame that would be nice as well yeah. that band-aid off yeah and i could not agree more because i am it, like i said it's been almost four years i'm tired of talking about it we could have had this done and no one would have any idea by this point but uh alan did you have something to add there yeah thanks um i guess it's it's two parts one is the we it would seem that if we have it locked to a relatively small area, you may be providing, and I, this isn't my decision, you may be providing a preference to those people who own the property there now. Right. In a way that's unfair. I'm not sure. And you have to make that decision. I think we're going to leave where it goes almost like blank. And I'm really worried because I have received calls about this and I haven't received calls about anything else as a city attorney. And it really worries me. And the second thing is pretty clear that you do not want us to write anything for retail sales. It, I'm not hearing anybody saying they're interested in having anything other than the manufacturing side of it, really. I think, am I reading that right? Absolutely. Is there anybody who disagrees with that? I don't, we don't mind what you, you know, if you disagree, so just stop. I disagree, but I understand that there is not the environment on the council for that, so I don't need to push that. That's fair. That's fair. Tony, you know what so I do. think. Yeah, just to kind of tie everything back together here. Like I said, I just I didn't want to uh, have Anthony spend an undue amount of time on starting to get you know parameters for an ordinance crafted. Uh, start looking at an application process, only to have everyone come back and say, "Ah, oh, no, screw this. We don't want to do it." So I just think this is just a good temperature check where we can all get together, bounce these ideas, just see where we're at and then see you know, what uh, the professional recommendation is from our legal counsel. So kind of do just want to tie it back to that and see, um, you know, back to Scott and Anthony to see what, um, what questions there are that may be outstanding that you need from us to be able to get this process started. So Mayor, what I would recommend would probably be the most efficient way of doing this. If it's council's desire to go forward with this, um, and it sounds like they want growing provisioning for medical marijuana, there was also a comment made by maybe you may or another council person about having some type of forum or follow-up meeting to get insight from people in the industry or people who have experienced this. It would make more sense if that's the desire of council to do that prior to start drafting the ordinance. Because I think after that, council will have a better gauge and feel of what direction they want to go in. Um, it, you know, we've narrowed it down to growing provisioning, uh, but then now it's going to be the number of licenses the application process, what that may or may not look like, uh, the application itself, and then do does council want a district for this to go into, or do they want it across the whole city? Um, so th these are things that council's gonna have to consider, which is really gonna tailor how this ordinance is gonna be drafted. Um, there's a lot of boilerplate language that's required by the state of Michigan that will go in there, uh, but there's very specific areas that's city specific. Uh, and it's really going to be, you know, what council wants to do. Do they want one license? Do they want 10 uh, or two? It's really up to them. So, you know, these are questions that they have to start thinking about uh, to get us the answers to draft this properly. 
Sure, certainly, and I, I appreciate that. Um, before we go back to that, I see Director Voss has his hand up here. Yeah, I, I know some of you uh, might think this is going to be strange for me to say, but uh, I, I'm not sure why we're so close minded on the provisional centers. Um, as far as we research, there has been no crime at these centers, um, they're very well secured. And there is, uh, there's, there's tax money to be made at these centers. I, I you know, I, I know the stigma, um, but it, it is something that should at least be considered. And that's just my professional opinion. Yeah. No, and I just certainly appreciate that. And I, I, you know, I can probably comfortably speak for everyone saying that, uh, that your opinion uh, is valued quite a bit, Director Voss, um, on this. And I, I guess the question I'd have is, what is the money to be made there? Because frankly, I, I really don't know. Um, I don't know if that's something that, okay, if it's you know $1,000 a year or if it's 100000 I I could not tell you. Um, but that is a very good question. I think that, uh, you know, so it sounds like just based on what Anthony said that, um, the things that we need to think about most are the number of licenses we want to allow and where this, uh, these district lines are drawn. Um, for me personally, I, I, there is not one dead set number that I've honed in on. Um, I don't want it to be a, you know, every business in the city is just uh, commercial marijuana production or anything like that. But I don't think it needs to be limited to one. Um, if that's, you know, four, if it's five, I, I don't know. Um, I really don't. And, uh, you know, in terms of the, uh, you know, zoning piece of it, that I think that, you know, there's probably industrial-ish areas that I, you know, like uh, Councilman Benedetti had referenced that I probably wouldn't have even thought of. Um, that a facility like this could go in. It could probably bring about a lot of uh, improvements to the buildings in that area if an investor is willing to put some money in. Um, and that from the same token, the residents nearby, and I know that there are stipulations for how close residential neighborhoods can be um, to these types of things, but for the most part, residents probably wouldn't have any idea. Um, so I, I would say, you know, a uh, at least, I, I don't know what number one to hone in on, but single digits um, and, you know, a more industrial area. I'm okay with, frankly, either side of Jefferson, if we're talking about that north of King Road stretch, I'm open to it on the, the Hooverish area on that, that part of Jefferson. Um, so I guess just kind of without knowing, I'm kind of just shooting from the hip on a little bit of this without knowing exactly in the state law what is allowed and what is not. Um, but that's at least the frame of reference that, that I'm working with and would probably like to see um, us take a more exploratory pro approach to unless anyone has any different strong yeah. opinions. I think Mr. Bologna spoke about getting some comment from the from other parties outside of the council and council and I mean, we can prepare you know something for you but at some point we really should hear from others because we may have it all wrong and listen to people we may if we're wrong so if you want us to start working on it we don't mind doing it and i mean quickly it, it's it's a good way for council to educate themselves a lot of the pitfalls that happens with other councils when they decide to go in this direction is they'll jump into it and they'll put an ordinance in place, but they won't educate themselves on what really they're doing. And that's where the issues uh, are created. And, and if you take an opportunity, and, and I know there's a timeline and the, and the timeline will be met, but I think it's worthwhile to do it right the first time and to take that opportunity to truly educate yourselves as councils as if this is what you wanna do. Um, and, and you could really create a, a great ordinance uh, that works for the city and will achieve the goals of council and the city in that way. Mayor, if I can comment on that. Yeah, go right ahead, Councilman. I think it's a very important statement there. We don't want to rush it. Some people, some, they want to rush this thing. People who have rushed this thing through are being sued right now, okay? We've got to think it through and do, make the right decision and make it one time. It's not a, it's not a uh, sprint. This is, this is a marathon. We've got to get it right and take our time and do it right. So I hope we, we do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah ab absolutely. Um, I think that that's important that we are thorough in that regard. And I think that, um, you know, as a whole, I, I certainly don't want to, uh, 
have it come off as you know not wanting public opinion but i do think that it's pretty safe to say that all of us have heard from a great deal of people on every side of this issue so far over the last few years so um and you know that's from people that have a lot of skin in the game that's from people that have none at all um and so i think that you know if there are you know examples that you can think of or can help uh I guess facilitate communication between us that, that that may be helpful because like I said, you know, just based on our charter, we have to have public hearings about this and we're certainly going to allow the public to express their opinions and want to do that. Um, because it's just the right thing to do. But if there are any sort of um, You know, expert opinions that you guys might be able to give us um, for potential pitfalls downfalls um, or opportunities that we may not be thinking about right now. Um, that is certainly I'd welcome that with open arms. The transparency of the application process is going to be really key. Absolutely. That location and, and process. And, it's, and those are going to be two tough decisions. You will have to make how many. Sure. Sure. And I think that just even giving us just a, a framework to work with where, you know, even after the fact, if we can, you know, just beat each other up over this to decide on what that exact number is or you know, change some district boundary, um, then sure, then that's what we'll have to do as a body, um, and so be it, and we'll have a, just a huge blast doing it. Um, but uh, I think just kind of knowing what kind of framework that we might be looking at um, would be just a really helpful starting point and just making sure the ball's rolling on this. Well, Mayor, if I can ask, and I guess trying to, to reel this in and, and to give us uh, some tangible direction uh, to work with legal counsel on, uh, we heard a few different ideas from different council people, but the one consensus was seemed to be, or the one one uh, position that everybody was on board with, was medical only, growing and processing only. Is that correct? Yes. So personally, I'm I'm okay with recreational as well. Um, I am kind of of the belief that at this point, most of the places that are selling are selling recreational and medical. So, I mean, it, it doesn't make any kind of difference to me. And I know I'm just speaking for me, not the council as a whole, of you know, which side of the store that they're selling things from. Um, I mean, it's all the exact same product. Um, it's, you know, has the same standards and codes uh, based on uh, Lara and all the state's uh, regulations. Um, so I'm, and I, you know, obviously willing to turn it over to everyone else here to give their thoughts, but I'm okay with recreational and medical growing and processing. Same here. Yes. I'm still sold on medical only at this point. We're not, uh, what I hear is we're not going down the road of retail. So we would only be looking at um, growing of medical only. In my mind, that's all, it's all up for discussion, but that's, that's my two senses, um, medical only at this point. Medical here as well. Do we have an opinion from Councilman Lefevre and Councilwoman Bond Crooks? Uh, that could swing the count of, of what we're uh, directed to be drafting here. Hello, Bill. Hello. This bill was, uh, was your support limited to medical marijuana only, not recreational for growing and processing? Or are you in favor of recreational? I would say right now I'm in favor of recreational. I want, I want to hear some more from people that are against it. But as I speak right now, I would I'd be willing to do both based on me hearing not any unfavorable reports back from the other side, okay? So, so you are open to considering recreational? Yes, well? yes. Okay. And Timber? I no longer see her on here. 
Uh, so maybe she's trying to get back in, but Councilwoman Pate, I do see. Yeah, well, she gets back in. I feel like it's a compromise um, that our residents did vote for recreational marijuana. So uh, if we're not going to be a distributor, then we can at least, um, you know, support their wishes in the growing. And it's, you know, they're not getting everything, but they're getting something. That's my okay. that's, to that's, try to represent that vote. This this is a a change from what was previously discussed or deliberated, and and something I, I want to talk offline with uh, our legal counsel on because uh, as you those who were on uh, the council at the time or may have been following it uh, recall two different uh, requirements from the state uh, on the uh, marijuana that you you had an affirmative duty to opt out of recreational, um, which the city did. Um, the medical marijuana you're assumed to be out unless you opt in. Um, so that would that is a change from the position the city uh, filed on record with the state if we want to get back in. Um, but but uh, that leads to some other questions I'd like to talk with Anthony and Alan about um, offline. Okay, if I could follow up on that. Um, I assume that opting out of recreational meant that we were not Going to be a seller, but I did not realize that that meant we were not going to be a grower. So the, I did the, not, that's one thing I did not know. And, and that's quite frankly one of the distinctions I want to clarify thank you. Uh, with our legal counsel. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mayor, I have a question. Yes, Councilwoman Munkrex. I, I don't know. Uh, my, uh, you know, thing cut off, or I don't know if you heard what I had to say or not. No, I don't think so. I'm glad you tagged back in. Well, it sometimes your meeting just cuts out on me and says join a meeting. So if I cut off, that's what's going on. I don't know what the connection what's wrong, but um, no, uh, I I don't know if Scott heard that I'm in favor of both. Did did he hear that part? I did not. <laughs> no, at least. Yeah. Okay, and so it was muted. No, I'm I'm in favor of. Both, I don't see the difference. If people are growing, you know, say 1,500 plants at a Molino site, uh, for example, I don't care if they're shipping it out for recreational or medicinal purposes. I don't get what the difference is. You know, where do we care what where it goes? I mean, that to me is that's their business. You know, because we don't have the storefronts right now anyway. So, sure. I, I, you know, I don't know. I. I don't see a problem. I, I just want to know how, when they drop this, these contracts or whatever, how are we going to regulate philanthropic donations if they are you know, inclined to do that for the city? How do, how do we do that legally? And how do we set a number of places that can be open? I, I don't know how you, it's called the right to do business. I don't know how you can regulate and say, oh, we only want three or we only want five or how, how are we going to do that? I mean, I only want one hair salon in town too, but you know, that's a different story. So I just want to know how they're going to regulate that. And, and like you said, you know, there could be one down on Hoover and Vreeland out that way, you know, in industrial areas or, you know, just on that one little area by, you know, McLeod Steel area. I mean, how do you, how do you regulate that? <clears throat> so I just want to know that in the, in, in the plan that we draw up. And also, how about the, the state licensing fees? You know, I thought there was a $5,000 permit cap on the licensing. So on the permits, I just kind of don't have those answered questions yet. And maybe legal counsel can give us that answer. We will. Yeah, I, I think those are incredibly important questions and ones that, yeah, that, uh, that Anthony and Alan will um, be able to get us. And I, I think that, you know, I just, like I said, before I told them that, hey, we want to do X, Y, Z, wanted to make sure that, right, we were at least all on the same page, had some, at least even loose right. reference to start building off of so we didn't get, take the ball, run too far before we realized we were running in the wrong direction. Um, because those are yeah. important questions of how do we, uh, you know, weigh out that application system? How do we make sure that it's fair and transparent and, and not end up Right, like the places where they're getting sued over it because that's the right. last thing I need in my life. So, yeah. 
I think that's what we keep asking these same questions for the last two or three years. So we need to get this down and on paper and done. You know, I know I'm not in a rush, but I want to I want to see some paperwork on it. You know, let's do it. Everyone deserves an answer. Yep, absolutely. So I think to just kind of wrap things up, I. In, you know, Scott and Anthony, I'll, I'll defer to you. Is this, is this I guess, you guys have a, a solid enough direction from us uh, to at least get started on this from? I mean, I know that, right, there's an undue amount of, you know, question marks still out there, but to at least uh, be in a comfortable place to say, hey, we can start working on this um, yeah, before uh, we take next. I'll say from my standpoint, um, I feel we have some direction, uh, much different direction than what we previously had, but we have direction. Um, and that uh, what I would suggest working uh, administration uh, with Anthony and Alan um, and what I'm hearing from the council, at least five of the seven are in favor of recreational and medical marijuana growing and processing. There is not an appetite for a dispensary or provisioning center for recreational or uh, medical point of sale. Uh, but uh, if, there's, if there's a desire to consider more than just that one mile strip that had previously been considered, um, I think we can work as far as presenting some options uh, that we've heard the council reference of what different approaches are. Uh, I have not heard anybody say they want it just wide open to any uh, industrial, uh, industrial zone property within the city. Uh, but I think we get into whether it's a finite number, uh, whether there are minimum distances between establishments where you build in limitations um, and something that Anthony uh, has stressed in all of our conversations, uh, an open, transparent and defensible uh, selection process um, is critical uh, to wandering down this path. Right. Let's go. That's what I like to hear. All right, so uh, is there, uh, I think that we've got that as an Anthony, I don't know if there, you have any other questions or anything else to add before I think we could probably wrap it up. No, not at this time. All right, that's what I like to hear too. All right, cool. Um, so with that, is there anyone else from council that has any, any additional questions, concern before we just do a quick open up to the public? Seeing none, um, since it's a study session, uh, we still are required to have any public comment. We will open it up if anyone from the public would like to speak, please open with your name and address. Um, we ask that you limit your questions to five minutes and please direct all questions through me, the chair. Um, do we have anyone, Madam Clerk? We do have one person. Let me unmute Armal. Mangia, I'm not sure. I'm, I know I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, so I apologize, but go right That's ahead. That's okay, Ms. Pate. Uh, it's Mandia, uh, or Mandia, uh, 2124 Reagan Drive, Rochester Hills, Michigan, 48309. And uh, I just had a couple comments here, um, specific to one, uh, adding recreational as well, um, to uh, kind of discussing how the city will make some more money directly from this as opposed to the sort of trickle down um, money coming from the state or they could uh, be coming from the state. And number three, how to limit um, uh, licenses either expressly or by, uh, by the zoning ordinance. Um, so first off, I mean, uh, you know, more licenses effectively means more money. Um, adding, adding the rec, um, I don't see how uh, you know, if you have medical, I don't see how adding a rec would be, uh, you know, any different uh, because all you're doing is growing and processing. And on the same note, because someone mentioned setbacks between establishments, uh, you know, having setbacks between grows and processors uh, is essentially pointless. I mean, they're competing um, at the state level, you know, if, uh, insofar as you have no retails, you know, all this stuff is going somewhere else anyway. Um, so it's a little bit irrelevant to have those little setbacks. Um, you know, another point being that, you know, licenses can be limited uh, by the city either expressly or if you have a tight zoning ordinance uh, or the overlays, I mean, you'll basically be, you'll have a limited amount of licenses based on uh, the ordinance, effectively where these places can be. Um, that'll naturally limit 
the am amount of licenses, but I also think that um, the city should consider uh, or get some more information on on stacking licenses, you know, at the same location by the same um, uh, and an operating entity. Uh, so those are essentially my comments uh, for the city to consider. And uh, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to let me speak. No, thank you very much. And those are certainly, uh, I mean, yeah, as you probably heard, you know, at least variations of questions that uh, we have that are still out there um, and will certainly be talked through thoroughly. Um, look for them uh, coming up too. So thank you very much. Uh, do we have anyone else from the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Support. And supported. Uh, Madam Clerk, we'll have you call the roll here too. Von Crix? Yes. Benedetti? Yes. Cable Watton? Yes. Lefevre? Yes. Pate? Yes. Perugie? Yes. Rezepa? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rezepa. All right, thank you very much, Madam Clerk. And thank you all for uh, joining us here this evening. Um, for those of you on council and then uh, all the other uh, appropriate department heads, don't forget we've got a, another closed session after this. So hopefully not, but this one won't take too long. But so we can just flip right over into that and uh, we'll be good to go. So take care, everybody. And as, as a reminder on that, uh, the closed session does have separate login credentials. Um, uh, so uh, do we want to plan on like uh, another five minutes from now, Stephen? Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll take another five minute break because I do need to, yeah. Where's the login credentials? Uh, that was emailed to email. you uh, earlier. If you'd like, uh, I can, uh, I can uh, send that to you, Bill. Thank you very much. All right. Anybody else from council need that? No, yes, Scott, please. Yes, from Scott Cabalwatton? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um.